Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light shine through. If you believe it's true, baby, won't you let the light To the night, I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through, it's true, baby let the light shine through, if you believe it's true, baby won't you let the light shine through.
Think about it, ring will tell you what I saw. When you break it up, you'll see who had it all. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Collegiate R6, the Winter 2020 series. I am joined here with my co-caster chief for an exciting matchup between Purdue and Illinois State. Two top teams are going to be doing battle to the death here in this best of three. Now, Purdue, as well as Illinois, are two legacy teams. They tend to win the majority of their games, but that's the problem with a tournament bracket like this. Only one of these two rosters can succeed today. So we're going to have to utilize that post-series knowledge to see who's it going to be. And honestly, looking at the map lineup and who's actually playing today, I have my money on Purdue. Well, definitely not a terrible, uh, I want to say bet in that case. But if we look at Illinois State, they also have a lot of power players. But if you kind of look at the map bands, those are really going to decide how these teams are going to play. Clubhouse and... We will not be seeing the map of Oregon either, but Cafe will be our Ooh. first one. Honestly, Oregon is overplayed so often in T3. Sure. It's kind of become the staple of T3. Basically, if you're playing in any T3, it's usually an Oregon club or Cafe. And sadly, one of the T3 special maps will be rearing its ugly head. That's going to be Cafe. But... Our second map of the evening is something that is never shown. It is going to be Theme Park as well as Consulate. So the majority of this best of three has some unique maps. And hopefully both of these teams have a huge map pool that will encompass all seven maps. Because most map pools do not incorporate Theme or Consulate. That's actually a really good point to bring up. You normally do see Cafe as one of those T3 staples in terms of the maps and the picks, but you usually don't see a theme park or consulate, so it's interesting to see those maps picked, and that just goes to show that both of these teams are confident in their abilities on these maps. They know what they're going to do. They have their strategies ready, and I I'm, I'm excited. This should be a really good matchup between these two teams. Yeah, Consulate is this very awkward style of map where the attackers, you know, once they have control of the map and they've entered in, put the bomb down, it becomes incredibly oppressive. But we can't even talk about the third map before we enter in our first map. That is going to be Cafe, and we're most likely, as always, going to see Thatcher instantaneously removed. On a map like Cafe, you have to get rid of Thatcher. He's just too powerful, especially when attacking those kitchen sites and just getting those power positions on getting those hard walls open, like piano wall, kitchen wall, freezer. Uh, what other ones? You've got... You just have so many different options. So, yep, you will see Thatcher banned here. He's almost become one of those operators where you just have to learn to play without him because he is banned so often. I would not be surprised to see an operator band such as a Capiteo here because these teams are going to be relying on holding that pixel angle inside of Cigar, but no, it's actually going to be a Monty here. So you will still see Capiteo and that should prove a lot of synergy between the attackers here. When they try and push out that person in pixel, you will definitely see a Capiteo as that option. And we've actually seen some pixel holds being changed up recently because Utility Consumption Simulator isn't as oppressive as it once was, but it still has to be somewhere logged in the player's minds because those strategies are still being somewhat utilized. You might see a pixel shield with one or two ADSs, but that player is just designed to waste time and retreat away instead of having that as a true apex position where they're trying to get picks because that shield is going to fall relatively quickly and sure ash one of the operators that is forced to deal with that shield doesn't have flashbang so she's going to call for extra help but it's going to be nearly impossible to hold that shield for much longer yeah and i'm a lucy ban here to just round things off for the ban phase 
and she has become one of those operators who is just really oppressive. I think personally she's in the same spot as Echo, where her gadget is just really been one of those comfort picks. You can take Echo and he will be able to stop the plants. Malusi is absolutely round changing in certain stances. When it comes to just having the ability to push towards site, she stalls so much of the attacker's time that the 20 second meta just becomes that much more prevalent. So seeing her band is almost going to be as common as Thatcher, in my opinion. Until they give her a rework, I don't think Malusi will be seeing a lot of playtime in this series that is upcoming. Do you remember when Goyo was first released, when he had oh, yes. three deployable shields mm -hmm. that are explosive? That's honest with Malusi. He was almost did. instant banned every time, too, just because of his he was so oppressive in the gadgets that he had. Yeah, and this is the map that really started it. You had three deployable shields. You put one in Pixel, you put one in Wash, and potentially in Barback, as well as in Cocktail. Good luck clearing that, and if you bring additional deployable shields, it is basically one of the most oppressive strategies. Now, obviously, we're just theory crafting that something that happened far, far long ago in the past, Goyo isn't quite that menace. But it's very interesting to utilize operators and think about, hey, Goyo was oppressive like this, so can Lucy. And obviously, these players have made the exact same parallel. Well, something interesting here. Illinois State will not be opting to take the deployable shield to attempt to hold Pixel here. Instead, relegating their utility elsewhere as a maestro and a Valkyrie. The two main informational operators of choice here. And they've reinforced the entire a wall of piano and even washroom. A spawn peak for patience, though, opens up our frags, and Hangman will find himself eliminated. This is Zofia off the board, and one of your potential fraggers now no longer a relevant factor. It is imperative when you're an attacker that you can mitigate the loss of life early on, putting drones in advantageous positions. White runouts or white spawn peaks are incredibly common, whether or not it's from the window, the garage, or the door downstairs. If you have a preset drone somewhere in garage, that's going to grab the information of white window as well as everything on that first floor. But sadly, well, the attackers of Purdue did not make those steps, and they have lost one of their lethal components. So they're going to have to basically utilize one of their flex operators which will be that IQ as a primary entry. But when Goose is just able to get free wall bangs, that might just be the answer to their prayers. Wasn't even a wall bang at that. The Jaeger gets caught out in a position where he is super vulnerable and the Ash of Goose Smitty takes him out. That is hooked up, now eliminated. So evening back the man count to a 4-4. Four -four. Still a minute 30 left to play here and there's still not a lot of real estate for Purdue in the attack. Meanwhile, Fortra is going to be below inside of Train Museum, waiting for a potential C4 and knowing that there could be one close. It's now been placed. All he has to do is wait here for Providence to walk right over. And there it is. A kill from below as Fortra will find the kill on to the hard breacher of Providence. That's a huge pick here as it's going to stall a lot more time as the freezer wall and the washroom wall will no longer be opened here. It's going to be up to the attackers of Purdue to start to funnel in to those hotly contested areas. And this is where the maestro and the mute shotgun, well, mute's not running a shotgun, but the mute as well, are going to be a very potent factor with their rate of fire. And even then, Kate as well, his job's already done in terms of his utility, but he still has that fragging potential. 35 seconds left to play. It is a 4v3, still in favor of Illinois State as the attackers of Purdue are struggling to get map control. The round started off with a Nitro Cell Bonanza, but there's only one left in the back pocket of the defenders. That is going to be Snail. And if Purdue walks into a default plan, well, that Nitro Cell can be ripped and sent down range. Bullets are another great way of doing so as the lobby just crashes all as it now just a 1v2. Ash against the world with six seconds. Going to be a guaranteed plan. Elevating on C3. No Nitro Cell denial, but bullets on the rotation will be just good enough. Eventually, they're going to come. It's going to be Patience credited with that final kill and a great showing by Illinois State. They obviously wanted to hold Piano as long as possible. It wasn't deployable shields this time, but it was the Nitros. I find it very odd that Purdue didn't go for a clear of below Piano because you already knew that Nitro cells were going to be a factor. I mean, look, they had a Valkyrie, a Maestro, and three people with C4. So 
that's not necessarily the best combination to try and push into piano with. Now, that being said, they did do a good job of using those Nitro Cells to deny the Hard Breach, which, if that Hibana were alive a little bit longer, she might have been able to get open those Washroom and Piano Walls. So, a really good job from the defense there, holding strong towards that late game push, because once the attackers started to funnel in, that's when they really started to show on the ability to capitalize on as many refrags and the positionings of the players as possible. So, now we're going down in the basement. This is not basement, but kitchen. This is one of those sites where Castle is going to be picked just to give you a little bit more versatility in trying to reform sites. So, if you look at what Her Herabic is doing, he's got the castle placed on the small bakery window inside not the outside one now he's made a rotate to the right but reinforced the wall to the left that will allow somebody to play behind that bakery bar which can help try and stall time for the attackers when they start to try and push in so basically kitchen is almost the exact opposite of upstairs where upstairs you want to turn all of piano into basically no man's land and force the attackers to take this However, when you're holding downstairs, you want to utilize as many of those first floor buffer rooms as possible. That's why Castle set up all of his utility over in Wedding, because that's going to be a fluid rotation for the defenders to actively challenge Big Bakery. Now, they're going to have to be careful with that north facing window of Small Bakery or Wedding, because if there's an attacker posted outside there, their rotations will be absolutely punished. But also on the other side of the coin, Illinois State has the ability to hold the entire map, utilizing as much of that control as possible, as it looks like Sledge is going to hit the Nitro Cell, forcing it to fall, not get destroyed. I like the idea what Illinois trying to utilize, but at the end, it just was a waste of utility. Now, I find that very odd that the Sledge decided to open the hatch there, because if the Valkyrie just decided to blow the Nitro Cell in one or two seconds beforehand, he would have been absolutely caught off guard and most likely would have been dead. So, interesting decision to challenge that. Or it, maybe there should have been a yellow ping from the drone onto the nitro cell where he could try and shoot it from a distance. But, you know, you got to be careful. These yellow pings have been absolutely influential on rounds. Krabic is going to find Hangman. The roaming castle strikes again with the UMP and the 1.5 scope. Now rotating all the way to reception as the opening pick again. Hangman dead in his tracks. Hangman has been really struggling so far at the start of this series. He's been on islands every single time he's been felled with no help whatsoever from his teammates. So obviously it's already stemming from the fact that there is a communication issue on the side of Purdue, which is baffling in all honesty because Purdue has succeeded based on their communication and their ability to play as a cohesive five-man unit. They play so well together, it doesn't look like there's five individuals in this lobby. It looks like there is just one team. That is Purdue, and they just slay everything. But right now, it's taking them a little bit while to actually start to apply the throttle. Well, Patience is gonna strike early and find Mila on the top floor by train, trying to play that vertical angles as the IQ. So she will be cut down as now Goosemitty is trying to get this refrag here, but with only 30 seconds left, Purdue is left at not a lot of options left. Poseidon's taking a lot of damage. That's Patience on the bottom of Red Stair trying to contest the ace as well, but cannot win the gunfight. That will be Providence capitalizing onto that. Still not a lot of time left as we get under 50 seconds left to play. Providence with a nice peek here onto Fortra. We'll find him. Can he find another one here inside a closet? He can't. Ravik's gonna find his second. It's all at the Goose Mitty here, and he'll find the castle, but cut down by Snail from inside of sight. Illinois holds on again. They take a two-round lead here over Purdue on Cafe. Right now, we're not seeing enough of the Purdue drone economy clearing out the entire map. We did see a few flank drones being set up on red as well as brown. The problem was there was no individuals from Purdue actually being forced to sit on those drones and catch the rotation and the aggressive plays of Illinois State. It is one thing to put your drones there. It's another thing to actively be watching them. If you're going to do a strategy, make sure you commit to it 100% because the moment that you lift off that throttle a little bit, you're going to start to have holes. And remember, just because 
pro players do one thing. You have to understand why they're doing it. They're trying to mitigate the rotation up and down the staircases. And honestly, the fluidity that Illinois State currently has, maybe that's going to pop a gridlock on the side of Jackson Purdue. We need something bomb. active on those staircases to shut it down. Now, you could use a Nomad here on Cafe and bury it between one of the stairs. The problem with a Nomad on Cafe is it takes one bullet to destroy it and most of the time where you place a nomad it's pretty much a free kill for the defenders that's why you use track singers because you basically cover the entire staircase and it doesn't matter if the defender is mailing it or shooting it they're going to make a lot more noise because air jabs just rarely actually get detonated on this map see here's the interesting thing between gridlock and nomad they have very similar gadgets in the way that they stop roamers from flanking but they work in two completely different ways you're right gridlock has the ability to put down a lot more and you're right they do have to get destroyed and make a lot of noise but that also lets the defenders still kind of push in without being completely at a disadvantage when a defender hits an air jab they are completely vulnerable there's nothing they can do at all so that's already a win for the attackers if they position themselves well patience being very patient here with the nitro cell outside of white making sure that he has the absolute best positioning here to try and contest the repel where mila has now set themselves outside of the repel to near terrace trying to spray in we'll find the default cam but fortress close trying to get this frag but cannot land any of the shots so here comes the top down take from purdue is so far they haven't gotten much to their name on the attack as it's mostly been illinois state just running their pockets in terms of the way they are playing their defensive strategies now you have to remember that this is illinois state's map pick they were ready for this map and i told you that teams that choose maps that aren't necessarily normal to them means they have a strategy in place they have some kind of upper hand in their opinion over what the attack or the enemy team is doing to them nitro cells start to go out here as it looks like the piano control is now in favor of purdue but they still don't have any vertical pressure as of yet it's now taken away Illinois State is electing to not utilize a stage roam, but they're still accomplishing more or less the same thing downstairs over in gears as well as in train, simply because the attackers are afraid to take map control because of those nitro cells. It has basically turned the entire third floor into no man's land. You can't push up without dealing with downstairs. Now, Purdue is still trying to boy their way forward, but they're being very cautious, sending those drones down to the second floor, getting sniped away. So again, the stage roam derivative or stage roam light somewhat being utilized, and that's one of the best ways that Illinois State can win their tertiary bombsite. Kravik's gonna have to be really careful here. He knows that there's one outside of Terrace here. Cannot land the shots, but IQ has the better angle on him. And now here come the Zof impacts from above by New Hatch. And yeah, he will get cut down by the Zo, but he's already wasted enough time with only 23 seconds left. They're gonna have to execute on site. Heyman's gonna find his second onto Fortra. Can he make it a third as well? Providence putting the diffuser down. His patience is looking for the Rome. Snail on the kill. We'll find Poseidon. Now it's all up to Snail hooked up and Patience here to retake sight as we find ourselves in a post-plant situation. Goose is going to find hooked up and Patience will be cut down as well by Hangman. They'll find a third. It's all up to Snail here with the all done in hand. If anybody can do it, it's him. But no, Mila will be able to take him out. The round will go to Purdue on the reading room and dining defense here. Does not pay out for Illinois State. Purdue finally get themselves a round here and cut the deficit to one round. One, two. It looked like Illinois State had no contingency plan whatsoever. Their whole macro strategy was to land those nitro cells. But what happens if those nitro cells fail? You have to be prepared for that. And Illinois State was like, all right, we didn't accomplish our job. We're just going to try to click heads and put ourselves in interesting micro positioning scenarios, particularly Castle over on the pillar side. His job was to hold Hell Door for as long as possible. But 
that was contingent on the defenders getting the man advantage early on. That never happened, which meant he was on an island. He gets put into a crossfire, a multi-angle crossfire from four different positions, and it doesn't really matter how good of a player you are, the likelihood of you winning any one of those challenges is pretty much nil. Now, if Illinois State had a strategy where Castle had a lot more fluidity with his movement, potentially a preset rotate over there by Pillars, it would have changed everything because a crossfire that Purdue had would not have guaranteed their kill, their man advantage wouldn't have grown, and they would have had to just push in through reading room as well as challenging Pillar, which would have put Illinois State in the advantageous crossfire. I think at the end of the day, that last round came down to how Purdue had established all vertical pressure. When you do vertical pressure, you start to flush out those common areas where defenders sit, which means that they can only be in a handful of other spots, per se. Looks like Pages are going to try a spawn peek here, almost lands the shots onto the IQ of Mila. A very, very risky play here from Patience, but it does not net himself anything as Poseidon and Mila are looking to try and rotate the Terrace. As I was saying, though, when you take vertical pressure, it's going to flush those defenders out of those key hiding spots and force them into places where you might not expect them to be. So the defenders can use that to their advantage, but attackers also have drones, and when they know that they are there, it's easier for them to take that gunfight. So a very good job from Purdue that last round. They took all that vertical pressure very early and established a ton of it between the Sledge, the IQ, and the Ash. So, realistically, you have to look at that round as a huge win for them in terms of how much map they are conquering in their Rome clear. I love how aggressive Illinois State was being in the first two rounds, but the problem is, as soon as you become super aggressful, aggressive in this incredibly unpredictable style of play, it actually becomes very predictable. You, as the attackers and the IGL, can start to break down, all right, we know he's going to swing, he's going to try to get the initial pick. If we hang back, utilize our drones, we won't get punished from this position, and it's worked out well for Purdue, at least in round three, and so far, they're not the opening death in the first nine seconds so already the adaptation that Purdue has made has at least kept them in this round a little bit longer but as I say that's gonna be our Jaeger finding the impact as Poseidon is gonna fall well it looks like Jaeger's gonna find a second on the hangman a double kill for him now he's looking for a third lit up quite a bit but now he's going to push completely in a piano and I don't think Purdue have any idea where he is at the moment they do the pre-fire is coming out from Providence he'll find hooked up patience will be cut down by Goose Smitty and all of a sudden it's a 3v3 again Selma charges go out onto washroom wall and now it's all up to a 3v3 situation here Mila's going to dispatch of one of the Mozzie drones but the Nitro Cell is going to ring out from below from Fortra, as now there's only one left of the Nitro Cells for Snail here. Ash Charge is going to go out and detonate on the Maestro turret as we hit 40 seconds left to play. We see Snail holding an angle from inside a freezer, making sure that nobody is going to cross into Cigar. The washroom rotate is open though, and Harabic is going to be taking quite a liter of damage from inside of Cigar Shop. Seeing a lot of movement here from the defenders with 25 seconds left to play. It's going to come down to the wire here in the fatal funnel. Sprays are coming out here from Havoc as Providence is going to be trying to get the diffuser down. The cover from Goose Smitty will not be enough. Snail will find him and cut down will be the ace. We will see a double kill as Snail will kick it up. Looks like Mila is going to push in but Fortress there to finish it off. Illinois State will win that round. They give themselves another two-round lead here as we hit the fourth round. And it seems like Purdue is just very slow at their execute upstairs, and they're just not setting up crossfires. They're just trying to push through one lane, which is called a fatal funnel, and hope they win their gunfights. They're an incredibly mechanically gifted team, but it doesn't really matter how good they are with their gun skill. They're not going to beat an Alda hanging out in the back of C1 as he just holds mouse one. If you try to jiggle peek into that, well, there's already 82 bullets going down range and you're just not going to win that engagement. Purdue has to change their strategy and they have to deal with the offsite pressure first, which means you start to send your attackers downstairs into gears as well as a train setting up a crossfire there dealing with that nitro cell 
now you have man advantage and you can attempt to push up white. As soon as you have any amount of pressure there, it doesn't even matter pushing all the way there. As long as you have one ounce of an attacker there, Jaeger's gonna have to fall back immediately to pallets. Now sure, he's gonna call for help and have another defender look towards white. But nonetheless, that has alleviated a lot of pressure over to the west, and it's also created a sort of a crossfire. It just, these steps aren't being made by Purdue. You're definitely right in that sense. So they're going to have to get a lot of vertical pressure. And just like they attacked Reading Room and Dining last time, that's going to be their main focus. Now, whether they do that from a top-down take from Piano and Red, that is yet to be seen. But I'd like to see a little bit more aggression. Maybe try and jump through train window because you don't necessarily need to cover from above. You do know that there could be somebody playing up there. But if all five of your teammates are in that same room, it can be a lot easier to dispatch the people above, forcing them to try and make the decision here. But that's not going to be the case here. Hooked Up is going to be playing at mid-red, and that will be, I believe, Fortra playing on white as well. So here comes the top-down take I said that they most likely would do here as Purdue looks to try and take this vertical pressure. The quicker they can do that, the quicker they can flush out Illinois State and get themselves some kind of established push here. Not too, too much happening all that much. So Mila will be inside of Cigar Shop. Just trying to hold these angles. It's mostly been passive plays from the defense here. They're not going to try and contest anything where they don't have the ability to win gunfights. You're going to have to keep going on because I have lost the feed entirely. Well, that is okay. We always have some technical issues. So Goose Smitty is going to be crouching down white here. Hooked up playing inside of Mudroom with patience to catch his refrag should he go down. Minute 30 left and we still see the Ash trying to push her way down through white. Now making their way towards the top near Skylight. Hangman looking to take some aggressive power here inside of Pillar as now they are just starting to get into train room. They don't have any intel on if there is anybody close, but it does look like all five defenders of Illinois State have rotated. Nitro sells in hand from Fortra as the, it could ring out here from above. The floor is a minefield and you have to be careful when there's this many Nitro cells, three in the case of Illinois State, in their pocket. 50 seconds left, but here comes Poseidon trying to get this super, super crucial vertical as Poseidon looking through getting rid of the mute jammers and here come the ace Selma charges on the freezer rotate 40 seconds left it's still a 5v5 but looking worse for where is Purdue as Poseidon will take a nitro cell from below from Fortra as hooked up is going to be playing behind the dining bar he will get cut down and that will be hangman getting a kill 4v4 here with 23 seconds left to play. For, uh, yeah, Providence, Providence is going to be trying to push down the stairs. Patience is going to get picked off by Goose Smitty. And now you're looking at a 3v4 situation as Purdue is looking to try and contest onto site. They'll have to rush in and that's exactly what Mila's going to do. But Snail's going to cut down Providence at the same time. And now looking at what we see here, Mila's got to push in, but the barbed wire is slowing him down and there is no position for the Zope to win any of those cunt fights. That'll be Illinois State winning another consecutive round here. They'll put themselves up three rounds as we hit the swap here. Well, almost the swap here in round number six, the last defending round for Purdue. Excuse me, Illinois State. So an APAC qual is one of the most important teams like Q Confirm were doing as they would change the pace of their attack. As soon as they felt the all clear, they would just take control quickly. Purdue isn't doing that their attacks are one speed the entire way and unfortunately it is a little slow they need to crank it up as soon as they say hey third floor is clear we need to take control asap they fan out they take third control and then they repeat that step for second floor and then they fan out Jack taking control and each and every stage of the upstairs and downstairs however purdue just isn't taking the map in a linear function they're just making mistakes along the way now they are good here in reading room simply because there is very little resistance on that third floor this was something we saw earlier when a purdue attacked inside of reading room and dining which was the established and there was a huge emphasis on holding that 
bar for Illinois State. Now, I guarantee you they are going to do that yet again. You already see Fortran hooked up, starting to put some reinforcements and ADSs in key positions. Reinforcing piano wall will be patience, and this just goes to show you that they are not necessarily going to hold stage, no. But they're going to put utility in spots that will slow the attackers down. And at the end of the day, if you do that, leave them with absolutely no time and force them into that 22nd fatal funnel, which we talk about, between the nitro cells, between all of the traps, Purdue is having a tough time doing so. The last time they attacked reading room and fireplace, they were able to get that top floor control because they realized that Piano and New Hatch were not being contested as hotly as they once thought it was. Once they cleared that guy out of pillar, then they allowed them to really try and play that vertical verticality. I think the reason we're seeing Piano being left alone is the fact that utility consumption is seemingly the best way of holding Piano, not only if you're actually having your bomb site in bar, but as well as in reading room, was that deployable shield. Because the initial macro strategy was to have a mirror in play, but since she's a default ban, you can't utilize her. So people are starting to bring Mute Mozzie to, again, deny Piano as much as possible. If you deny the drone, you deny entry into Piano. Utility Consumption Simulator was the next meta, and what is always a great meta is shooting defenders in the back, catching them off guard during rotates. So my guess, moving forward with Cafe, we're gonna see a lot more passive holds across the entire map, but it's gonna require the attackers to actually drone. Well, that is a very interesting position from Fortra there on the cocktail balcony. He will cut down Hangman, who's been not having himself very much luck when it comes to trying to push defenders here. And Providence knows that there was a mute here earlier, but cannot find out where he went. Thus, he actually dropped all the way back into sight. No, he didn't. He's below in pillar. I lost sight of him, and so did Purdue as he will find another one. Cut down by Providence finally on that refrag. Just a minute left to play. It's a 3v3, but the damage has already been done from Illinois State as Purdue is on their last legs to try and push into sight here. The castle barricades are going to slow them down quite a bit. And with barely any breaching charges left, now the last one from Ash being dispatched of, there's no Selmas. They'll have to melee their way into sight. It's gonna be a huge blunder as everybody from Purdue is trying to knock down that door. Snail the caster is able to find one with his auto, and it's a complete and utter slam fest for both of these rosters, and particularly Goose, who's able to do a quick flick on the rotation, but now it's just a 1v2. It's gonna Goose, he's gonna have to find even more impact frags. He's trying to change up his angle vectors, but it's not gonna work whatsoever. Snail is able to save the round. That's gonna be a 5-1 split for the defenders. That's a really good position to be in if you're Illinois State. You already know that this is your map pick, so you have to make a statement here. This map of Cafe, you looked really good on defense. You only allowed one round to Purdue on attack. That is an absolute huge statement. It's almost as much of a statement as a 6-0. Now, a lot of these rounds came down to very, very close situations. So, if we kind of look at the spread here, it's been equal most of all but poseidon not really finding himself those impact frags that being said he's still making himself useful on the support role and never something to be overlooked and if we look at illinois attacking side operator picks going very aggressive you see the ash you see the nomad and i believe i saw an iq as well so you're looking at a very heavy heavy push through piano and that can only be facilitated by getting open that piano wall and red wall which is why they have the thermite instead of the ace thermite is just a little bit more reliable in terms of just trying to get walls open ace is good and habana are good but their gadgets are just so situational if there's utility on the wall if there's somebody contesting it the only thing they have over thermite is that they can deploy them at a range but they cannot make as much of a hole in certain walls and get as much open as possible. Honestly, looking at that six pick phase, I was so eager to see the Nook in play and how they're trying Wait, to there was work a nook? Operator. They were showing that. the Nook. They ended up going to a Jackal and finally confirming the Ash. I was fortunate on that. But we've actually 
could find some viability with a nook and hear me out for this one of the best ways to defend cocktail are the three bars back here and back in the day you would just send a buck from underneath you would remove the entire floor and then you would send a frag grenade and actively kill one of the players sitting on the bars back there. Now, Buck doesn't have frag grenades, but you could still bring a Buck or utilize Ash with her three breaching launchers, send every one of those breaching launchers up near the bars in the back, and then you send a frag grenade if you guaranteed a defender there. We've seen that strategy before. It has worked before all the way in T1 down to T3. So if you needed a set of frag grenades, Nook has them. I mean, you're not wrong. Nook does offer that versatility in her loadout and kit. Looks like it's going to be a vertical take from bottom to top here. An interesting, different style of attack that we didn't see Purdue utilize at all. And it looks like Illinois is having pretty good success here as they already have Fortra and Hrabic below inside of Reading Room and 90 respectively patients are going to be outside of Terra setting up those air jabs making sure that he won't get run out on and the same thing spraying down all of these barricades here trying to scare the defenders on site which will allow the attackers from below to flush them towards these open barricades and get the strikes. Kushmi is going to be taking a little bit of damage from inside of site but Providence is going to sneak and find two. Fortra and Havoc will be cut down by Poseidon and Providence, but quickly on the refrag will be patience and Goose Smitty will fall. Providence will capitalize with a second and the FMG9 strikes again here as patience will be cut down. Snail gets a beautiful shot onto the Wamai playing the pixel shield and a minute left to play. Snail and hooked up the last two members on the attacking side to try and contest Purdue and their site here. Try to place one of his exothermic charges on the wall but it will be a softball, so he does risk that wall getting opened, or it will also be shot, the charge itself. Poseidon's going to be playing barrel stuff close inside of Washroom here. The Thermite's going to try and contest it, but one of his flashbangs will be caught up by the Wamai disc. He will be fully flashed now. Not a terrible way to start for this Purdue defense here, as it looks like they have everything in their place here to try and cut down this last tech and attack the goyo shield why didn't you shoot it hooked up will be killed by mila on white stairs it's all up to snail here with the thermite in hand but cannot contest through the smoke providence that will be the fmg9 one of the weapons that you don't see played very often striking with the 1.5 scope so it seems like both of these rosters on attack are failing at dealing with mini games. They're not addressing them. And one of the best mini games, the most common mini games across all of T3 is that pixel deployable shield. When you're an IGL, you have to identify that there is utility there as well as an operator. Then your job is to bring the attacking operators over to actively deal with that shield. That might mean having your entry frag preset a drone on one of those tables so you can have constant information on the member of the defending team sitting behind that deployable shield then you rotate somebody over with flashbangs then you rotate somebody over who has an explosive Defender device and bomb. then you coordinate the entire that. execute you basically rinse and repeat for every single mini game however on attack these rosters just simply aren't doing that they're just trying to force their way into the objective force their way into the gunfights and honestly that's not the best way of winning strategy honestly well you talked about the comparison between nomad and gridlock respectively by themselves they're powerful but what about when they're together if you notice illinois state they're bringing a gridlock and a nomad they are going heavy on that roam flank denial and i don't blame them with absolute gunners on the side of purdue and the amount of people they had off site last time and it, it's not a terrible decision you want to be able to cover your flanks and not necessarily cams and claymores are super reliable that's where the track stingers and the air jabs come into play so i kind of like the decision from illinois state though i have not seen something this complex be laid out before so i'm very interested to see if this actually plays out well and realistically 
the way that Illinois State wins this attack here is if they focus on Bakery here. They don't necessarily need to take top floor control as long as they flush out that Wamai sitting behind Bakery, which they did last time when they were trying to flush him out inside of Pixel. It is definitely possible, and with the utility consumption meta not at such a high capacity here, it is absolutely possible. But those Wamai discs and those ADSs can definitely prove to be a factor here. But there's the wall. It will be now opened up, and that will prove to be a little bit more challenging here for the defense to try and play around. They've now given up complete bakery control to the attacking side should they start to push in here. Looks like Purdue will need to try and flank here. And this is where the gridlock and the nomads become very impactful. The Fortress going to capitalize and find Mila. That's a huge kill here to cut out the Wamai. So far, the attackers have accomplished the majority of their goal, but the problem is they have no crossfire whatsoever. They're doing a very linear take, and the moment they start to enter either through prep, the pre-made rotation, or over by long, they're just going to be walking into the gun barrels of the defenders. So the attackers are going to have to start to rotate over and take a little bit more map control. And Illinois State's going to do exactly that, going in through coach check. They're going to lose that engagement as Jaeger's sitting there, but finally it's going to be a quick trade, and Illinois State is going to maintain their man advantage, and the majority off-site pressure, other than Hangman, has now been dealt with, but Hangman has the ability of flanking. We are talking about how Illinois State has brought a lot of flank operators, but they haven't put themselves in advantageous position. They've only put it on one front, which has allowed him the fluidity of rotating back to the bomb site. We see Hangman, he's going to cut down, hooked up, or I'm choosing, that was actually gonna be Snail there. So already back to a 3v3 situation. 30 seconds left to play. It's going to be up to Illinois State to see if they can execute onto site here. Fortress already made his way inside. A prep knows that there's a shield close. It's the Goyo shield. The Mute's going to be playing behind it. And there is Goyo not able to take the kill here as he will be cut down. And that will be also Fortra taken out by Poseidon. Patience is going to find a second onto Providence here. And there's Poseidon picking up his second as well. A 1v1 situation ensues as Patience and Poseidon look to duel it out here. The Mute and the Maverick taking some shots between the two of them. And the pressure is on, but Patience wins it out here. Illinois State off the back of the Maverick's Patience will win them that round, the 4K, to give him that one. And it seemed like the defenders were just over-peaking. They still had plenty of time, plenty of utility. Utilize those aggressive swings when you have no other option. We still saw Nitro Cells. Those Nitro Cells were never utilized. It seems like the defenders were just, well, trying to pad their stats. And something that also is very concerning for me on the side of Illinois State is it seems like Snail is constantly finding himself in gunfights. He is the primary support operator. He is playing that Thermite role. He should, in theory, never have to actually pull the trigger unless all of his mates are dead or if he's trying to actively plant the bomb. But instead, he's almost spearheading these attacks, and he's falling attacks early. Now, he is winning the majority of his gunfights, and I think that's just a problem of Purdue's micro-positioning, but nonetheless, that's not a sustainable strategy for Illinois. So, I actually made a mistake earlier. This is not Illinois State's map. This is actually Purdue's map pick, so... This is absolutely huge right now. Illinois State is causing an upset over Purdue on one of their more established maps. This is the one you pick, so it's one that you're definitely feeling comfortable on. Now, Illinois State just looks really powerful here on both attack and defense so far. Looking at the setup they have going here, it's going to be an increased hold of reading room and dining as they look to hold inside of bar and cocktail, which last time they did very, very well. So what will the strategy be out of Illinois State? Are they going to do the traditional clear all the way from the west? Or are they going to utilize their round advantage to bring something out that is a little bit more atypical? In Collision R6, we have seen a lot of hell door rushes. And given the fact that it's currently a 6-2 split, a lot of these college IGLs love to go for the full said style of strategy. Sadly, though, we will not see that Helldor rush. We're going to see the more sensible strategy. It's going to force Illinois Sid 
this, utilize as much of their drone as possible, sending them down range, confirming the location of Purdue, and hopefully creating a macro strategy to deal with those defenders. Well, they definitely have some strategy in hand with the gridlock and nomad combo coming out yet again. Although it didn't work great last time, it still was a pot had potential to really cause a lot of damage. Looks like Fortress is actually going to impact the default camera there. And an interesting decision. There was no Maestro cam in what I saw. There may maybe there was, but I didn't see one. Goose is playing a very dangerous game here, but Heravik is going to find Providence on the Invert Repel. Bottom of white, Castle will be cut down. Here come the Track Singers at the bottom of white. Also now cutting off Goose and his rotation here on top of Drywall. Mila is going to be holding a punch hole angle through the dresser here as Goose is trying to contest the Invert Repel here from the gridlock of Kravik. We see Fortra on the top of Red with Snail also trying to get open Freezer at the same time here. Looking to try and push into Mila here. He's looking very, very, very dire. The problem on the side of Illinois State is they don't have a lot of soft disruption. One of the best strategies is to remove the entire ceiling away from the defenders, but they haven't even taken control of Cocktail yet. Hangman's gonna find an impact frag, trying to avenge Providence, who fell 60 seconds ago, and Goyo's gonna be hanging out over in C3. If Illinois State hasn't drone out that Goyo, it is gonna be an absolute blunder, and judging by the way Illinois State is currently playing, they have it, and that kill by Mila will definitely confirm that. A huge oversight by the attackers, and this is gonna put themselves at a man disadvantage, forcing the rotate all the way over to trade. Now the defenders set up a very long line of sight over to White, which the attackers are gonna attempt to abuse, but missed shots all of around, and all of a sudden, it's now just a 1v4 with Fortra down on the ground. He's gonna have to go for the force res, but not even able to hit F. It's gonna be Purdue keeping their stakes alive. That was a really good defense here from Purdue, and that really just came down to holding inside of Bar and Cocktail. And I don't know if it was misdroning on the part of Illinois State, just failed execution, but they did not get open freezer wall from the Thermite, and it just seemed to falter out completely. The push was not there, and it was very evident that they knew what they were doing. They had all of their positioning correctly, they had the entire site set up to help work with them in the retake, there was no need for a retake, though, when the entirety of top floor is still under your control. And really, you only surrendered them piano and train control, which in the long run isn't necessarily detrimental to the push, especially when you have the entirety of fireplace and dining opened up. Not necessarily reading, but when you try and push reading, you want to make sure you have that vertical control. So we're going to be going back Attackers to, to the spot. top floor site. And judging by how well that Purdue held the top floor when they were playing in reading room and dining. This could be a very influential position for them to be in, and the site choice here will definitely aid them in that kind of strategy. So I'm interested to see if they try and hold Pixel again. Last time the Wamai did a little bit of damage, but I don't think, in my opinion, it was necessarily the most advised, and use of utility was okay but they didn't stall completely enough time what really came down to was the impact frags they were able to cut down the push through cigar last time and able to stop that vertical from bottom to top take that we saw illinois state do last time so if i were purdue right now i would put somebody and hide them in vip if they miss drone if which we've seen illinois state do before it's a copper strategy yes but Hear me out. If you just completely let them walk by, maybe as a cav, or you put yourself down there just to try and stall the push up white, it could be very, very helpful. Honestly, if you catch the attackers off guard, I don't know if it's necessarily a copper strategy because it's the job of the IGL to be prepared for every single scenario. And far too often do I see ranked players as well as T3 or pro players say, why was he there? The reason he was there was because you, as an attacker, didn't drone it. You didn't do your homework and you didn't do your due diligence. As soon as you find yourself uttering those words, 
ever at a game of Rainbow Six Siege, you have to go back to the drawing board, understand why you lost an engagement, and rethink your mindset. Every time you play this game and lose and or win, you should take it as a learning experience because that's the only way you're truly going to grow. But for the time being, the attackers still have to get control of the map. They're going to utilize those drones to confirm Pixel, and the Pixel player will have to hold for as long as possible. Well, it's definitely looking really well for this Pixel hold here, and Lamai is in a very good position. While well, you see Fortra is below, trying to flush him out of that position. Again, you have to remember, Hangman is sitting on a hard surface, so it's not easy to get him from below, and it's near impossible, but... By opening up the floor in front of it, it allows you to put flashbangs closest to the shield. And you can actually sometimes, if you get a nade in just the right spot, you can get rid of that deployable shield. Now, Poseidon is going to be barrel stuffing inside of Washroom. With the Nomad charge now on the door, it will not allow him to rotate into piano. 40 seconds left to play. It's still a 5v5. Anybody's game at this point. So, for the time being, who is going to find the opening casualty? Will it be the attackers? Will it be the defenders? And right now, the attackers of ISU have the majority of the map control. But do they have enough to be successful? They might be able to go for a default plan. But with all the swing potential from Purdue, it might catch them off guard. Now, Providence has no more smoke grenades, which means he can no longer deny time. So it's going to come down to the bullets. Here comes the death and destruction as everybody's the attempt to push on through. But it's going to be a sea of blue in the kill feed. And the bomb is not going down. This round's going to have to go down to time. It's going to be Father Time who ends up ending this. Purdue still in the fight. You really can thank the pixel hold and the shield there. It did so much for the defenders there. It saw them so much time, and it really kind of real it kind of forced Illinois to just push. And at the end of the day, they didn't have the wall open. They didn't have enough real estate inside a piano cigar in new hatch. They didn't have the picks. They didn't have anybody on the rappel outside white or those north windows. So you just kind of put yourself in a position where it's not going to work out unless you get picks. And you have that person playing inside a washroom, the air jab there, yes, but you still have to force yourself into a short range engagement against a pump shotgun, which really, really hurts. I mean, I, I don't want to push a pump shotgun if I don't have to. I'm going to avoid it unless I can take it at a ranged gunfight or if I have a shotgun myself or I flash that person. I'm not going to take an engagement where I'm at a severe disadvantage and the enemy can easily kill me. So, what's the problem with attacking bar? You either have to get kills in order to push yourself into piano and white, or you just run in and cross your fingers that you can click on their heads faster than they can do it to you. But at this level of gameplay, it is not easy. And I think you made up a great point right there. You should always utilize strategy first, head clicking second. Far too often in T3 and Collegian, teams put mechanical skill first, getting opening picks first, and not really relying on strategy. That's actually what Purdue is doing a wonderful job of. They have a great macro strategy. Now, it's still basically emulating Utility Consumption Simulator with Jaegers, well, my pancakes and deployable shields, but it's still enough to basically have a huge road blump in the side of Illinois State when they go for their attacks, trying to push through map control. And those key aspects of the Purdue defense, those are my pancakes and Jaeger ADSs, sure, they have been nerfed recently, but they have clearly not, not lost all of their potency. They're still extremely viable, and Illinois is struggling to deal with them. Well, Goose is going to be trying to contest the person outside of the fireplace. Repel is taking quite a bit of damage. I believe that was Rabic on the Repel there. Fortra is also trying to flush out this Jaeger, but Fortra is going to find Goose. Cut down is the Jaeger, and that's a huge pick here as Illinois State looked to try and push in. Looks like Hangman took some of my advice from earlier and is now playing inside of VIP. This is one of those power positions that can really stall that time when it comes down to pushing through Freezer. I don't know if Patience actually sees him here. He might hear him, but cannot see the top of his head. Yeah, he, he yellow pinged him. He knows he's there. So Hangman 
he's in a position where he can contest the person inside a reception and can hear somebody vaulting in, but the couches don't offer him as near enough protection as a doorway would in this case. Well, Mila is going to take out Hooked Up, and not sure exactly where that was, but it's a crucial frag to try and aid in their defense of Kitchen. Now, Hooked Up has been struggling in this series, and Fortress also going to fall in this round. Now, Hangman has to be very careful, because as you were saying, those couches that he's currently playing around, well, they will be shredded into oblivion as soon as Patience starts to hold Malice 1 with his M249 saw. Vertical holes are above. are going to work out brilliantly for the attackers, as it's going to allow them to get two free kills. This is going to force the offsite pressure to crash back onto site with a bomb going down. That crash has to happen now, but it doesn't seem like anybody from Purdue understands that this round is now going to change drastically as those defenders have to turn to attackers and retake their bomb site. It's definitely not going to be easy, especially with an air jab now on this doorway. But Hangman actually can't spot it out. It's actually in a position where he can walk in and easily shoot it. So now they have to retake site here. Mila with the MP5K and the 1.5 scope will find the Thermite. A double kill for Mila here. But the top floor pressure from Rabbit is going to be trying to contest his diffuser. He sees one. He doesn't have many nades left. He only has one and he's going to try and use it to flush him off the diffuser. He'll find one. He'll find two. Rabbit and Illinois State will upset Purdue on their map pick here on Cafe. Taking the map seven to four i will say that was a phenomenal retake of the bomb site from purdue they pinched at exactly the same time they set up a 180 degree crossfire and snail got absolutely obliterated he couldn't fight the double assault he was trying to challenge both angles at the same time but instead he was looking in the wrong direction because he was trying to twist around i have to give purdue props for that but as soon as they had to control the bomb site they were trying to hunt for that last remaining member of Illinois State. With the elevated pressure, they really had only one option. Relegate one of those defenders to actively hold those vertical angles. And you just can't beat a frag grenade. At the end of the day, they tried their best. They ended up losing map one. But fortunately for them, this is a best of three series. So we might see another two maps. Well, moving on to theme park will definitely be interesting and can't wait to see exactly what shapes out between these two teams. I think one of the main reasons we saw the attackers lose that round, even though they had the man count, was it really came down to the positioning of the attackers. What realistically happened was that Thermite should not have been inside a site right on top of the diffuser. You had both people off site. You knew that they were off site. And the air jab there, it's going to facilitate and help you when it comes to giving those intel from when they're flanking here. Now, when that person went to go shoot the air jab, the mozzie, I don't remember who exactly it was, that put them at a, an absolute disadvantage when it came to trying to get inside a bakery. If the thermite knew that and swung when he was taking out that air jab or causing a little bit of a distraction, that's huge. So... I think that a lot of that round came down to the positioning of the attackers where they were in a good position, but I don't think that that Thermite was in the best spot to really facilitate that defuse. Now, he did get the plant down and he had the vertical pressure to cover, but I don't know. Now, Just before, my two cents. Yeah, before we can even talk about map number two which will be theme park we're gonna have to dive into a quick five minute break to allow these players to recuperate and prepare for the next series don't go anywhere we'll be back in five minutes I'm 
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, CR6 is back in this best of three series. Map number one, which was Purdue's pick, would fall 7-4 to their opponents of Illinois State. And Illinois State will now take us over to their map pick, which is a legendary theme park. Not often do you see a theme park pick, so very exciting to see what this team has in store, especially when they are upsetting Purdue. One of the top five arguably best teams here in Collegiate R6, so very, very interesting to see what will really play out here. I'm hoping to see Illinois State really employ a lot of strategies that you normally wouldn't see in a typical theme park match. So. I don't want it to be like a ranked game, but I don't want it to be absolutely, you know, super standard. You want to see teams start to do their own kind of strategies. And I think Theme Park, because it is one of those, I don't want to say newer maps, but one of those less played maps, it, it is going to be one that you'll have to watch. And yeah, no surprise here. That's your, the first one, Ben. So uh, nothing out of the ordinary so far, but I'm still hoping just for that oddity, just for the caster the, in me, where you have somebody that's something unique, whether it's an operator ban or the strategy that will come out here. I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm hoping. Here's to hoping. So frequently in APAC and ANZ, we actually saw a ton of Cali and Thatcher bans, which basically meant the opening the walls were nearly impossible. It forced the attackers to bring out a Maverick and utilize those frag grenades to remove any electric units on those walls. Now that exact same strategy will have to be employed. A lot of North American teams just aren't comfortable with Cali simply because her bolt action sniper's rifle is just cumbersome. You have to hit one shot, and if you miss... Good luck pulling that bolt back and recycling it. Most likely you're going to be sprayed down by a gun that has a lot more rate of fire. And here <laughs> in Rainbow Six Siege, headshots are key, and well, so is rate of fire. That's something to keep in mind, and I did like when Callie actually got the SMG added to her kit, because that did make her viable in those closer range situations. Now, she can basically be like... Lash, she can take some of those long range engagements with the SPSMG9, I think it is. I don't even remember. Pocket the name. F2. The Pocket F2, we'll call it that. I like that. That's a good way to put it. So she is viable, in my opinion. And look, you're going to see Harabic. He's going to take that Cali here. It's, it's going to make getting those walls open easier. And when they go armory and thrown, it's all about getting those walls. Yellow, armory, Defenders maintenance, you have to get those walls open or else you are forcing yourself to funnel through two separate doorways, which is just not ideal. This is why armory and throne is just such a powerful site and why you see impact tricking, so much emphasis on the defensive side for that wall denial. You see the mute, you see the, oh, no bandit, oh, no Cade, oh, never mind. <laughs> Well, we've seen a lot of Kaid being brought on this map, particularly to deny the northmost wall and invulnerable Kades. The problem with that is most competent teams are being Mavericks, so you just slice the wall, the top part, the bottom part, you bring over a soft destructor, and the wall gets removed. When you bring the Kali, sure, you can remove those mute chambers, but what are you foregoing? The opportunity cost and utility are the loss of frag grenades and potentially making smaller holes in the wall. Also, we didn't really talk a lot about that Ace bin. Ace can be a phenomenal operator because he can open up three of those soft walls as well as smoke plant either on the south side, which is thrown, or deep into firebox. This is, I don't know, but this is a first for me, seeing an extended hold upstairs, but there are four defenders holding initiation and bunk. Um, that's, uh, that's interesting. I actually haven't seen that yet. So they're already emphasizing, emphasizing that top floor control. They've used a ton of their reinforcements, and it's almost like they're playing for a site retake here while just trying to stall this top floor attack. So this is one another one of those stage style of roams. You fan out, you snipe away drones, you retreat to your anchor positions, and again, it's all about holding as much as possible. But Providence bearing himself over in vault might be a huge mistake. He has no possible way of rotating. He has no and you, shield either. He's yeah. completely vulnerable. Two ADSs and technically all the well, my pancakes he can throw, but he's basically 
dying in that spot. He might take individual oh, he does have a shield. Them. I'm sorry. My bad. Apparently his shield's the blow- it blends, it blends in perfectly with the ground, so I totally understand the mistake, but he's on an island, and it seems like Illinois State doesn't want to deal with them, and the indecision is going to cost them their lives. Well, Hangman's not going to have to act any harder than what he is doing with these long Attack angles the from inside the bunk. He will be able to cut down Fortra, and that's Zo off the board. As you see, Patience trying to contest the long angle onto where his comrade was eliminated. Hangman now inside of Bunk yet again, playing behind that table, turned sideways. Poseidon's going to capitalize onto Harabic though, and that will be the Kali cut down. And you talked about the one shot potential of Kali here. You miss one shot and you're basically dead. And that's exactly what happened. Harabic will be cut down as Looks like Hooked Up is now inside of Office Showers, looking to try and contest the Wamai here, who is who's pretty uh pretty solid solidly holding this side of initiative. He's gonna push out here. What are you doing, Providence? Hooked Up is just holding you here. This is not a smart play. And now Hooked Up's going to swing. What what is going on? He's gonna sprint at him? Oh no! It's a huge blunder upstairs. It was complete question marks. And all of a sudden, Illinois State is going to find themselves with one man left against four. It's going to be patience. His teammates had none of that. And he's going to be basically on an island to die. Shots exchanged. He's actually not going to be able to pull the trigger as Providence is able to get the kill. You were talking about Providence leaving his hidey hole. He was basically bunkered down like Fort Knox, but then he just opened the floodgates and retreated. Pure and utter question marks. Absolute bananas in the lobby, but the defenders still able to win. I, 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 I don't even know why the, uh, the Jackal just decided to push straight on to the shield there. Um, I, I get it. You really don't have a lot of options there, but... You know the Wamai is playing there, so why are you sprinting at him? At least keep your gun up, because you're just putting yourself in a terrible position to not take the gunfight, and yeah, you're not going to win it against the Wamai crouched behind a shield when you sprint right at them. They have the sound cues. It, it's just not going to work. So, interesting decision there from both sides, and uh, definitely that round is going to play out in favor of the defenders there, though, just because the attackers were not able to gets any real estate to their name. They didn't even get Armory Wall really open all that much. And they were able to get open the maintenance wall, but they still weren't able to do anything with it. There was only one person on site, and I find it very, very odd they didn't capitalize on that. I just think it comes down to the fact that Illinois State looked very tunnel vision in their tech. They understood, we want to take control of offices. Great macro strategy, and they definitely need control of offices to be successful to execute. But as soon as they ran into roadblocks to the mountains, their linear take became their undoing. If the attackers of Illinois State started to rotate individuals over to Cafe, and then do a sandwich style of push, basically trapping everybody in that one corridor of offices and initiation, those defenders would have had to take multi-angle gunfights and they most likely would have been felled. Particularly if attackers took cafe, opened up the westmost cafe wall, and then opened up that vault wall, which was currently left salt soft, that poor Wamai of Hangman would have been destroyed. Fort Knox would have been ripped right open, and he would have, well, like his mates, had to challenge a multi-angle gunfight. But instead, Illinois State did a linear push with no crossfires whatsoever. That's just really been the story of the way that Illinois State has been trying to attack here. They try and take one-on-one -on -one gunfights against people who should really get the advantage here. Yana's going to put her drone all the way in through Cafe. Realize it's completely clear, but Goose is going to be playing outside. On the doorway here, Hrabik is going to be now pushing up. Knows the intel of the Jaeger is probably close here. It's now getting dispatched up. The quick peek from Hrabik is going to find the Jaeger. That will be Goose now. Eliminated one of the potential roaming threats. No longer a presence here, making it a little bit easier. The Yana proving to be very influential with that infinite drone economy. Hooked up, now inside of waiting room, trying to get the crossfire onto the Wamai inside initiation. It's the same exact thing from last time. It's Hangman and hooked up in a 1v1, and Hangman's going to get the better end of that deal again. 
He is really liking it inside a vault there, but who's not liking it? Will be Ravik. He will be cut down by Poseidon here. A minute and 15 seconds left to play. It is a 4v3 as the attackers are on the short end of the stick with the man advantage no longer in their favor. Ping or hooked up seems to just get so narrow focused that he has no idea where the defenders are. And that advantage that Purdue worked so hard to achieve is going to get even larger as it's a 2-4 split. And the attacker is going to have to relink up together and try to push as a unit to actively deal with this offside pressure. But yellow and red pings are going to go up. A nitro cell is going to go upstairs. A little bit of damage is going to be dealt to Fortra, but not enough to actually kill him. So he still has 50 HP, which means he, if he lands his shots, he can still be just as lethal. Snail's going to work his way up, but it's going to work him way down as he's going to get felled. A sprint in from Fortra is able to find one, but he's going to be down but not out. Unable to withstand as Milo's going to be credited with the last kill. Purdue with two in a row. It just seems like Purdue is everywhere. The site is not even upstairs. It was an initiation. It was all the way downstairs in drug. Uh, not drug. No. Where, where was site? Was it bunk? Dorms. It was dorms. Okay, so it was bunk. I was going to say, they all funneled into cafeteria. All four of them. They're playing so aggressive. Even when they're down in a 4v5, when their Jaeger got picked off, that didn't stop them. They still pushed angles aggressively. And right now, Illinois is looking very dire on their attack attacking strategies. They have to win this defense in lab and storage here. Now, this is not necessarily the best site to go but neither is initiation and waiting and room where it's a site that's very easily facilitated with a mira but alas mira is bent so initiation is not going to be a very good site to hold playing inside a cache and underneath control room that's really the only way to defend those sites so drug is going to be a little bit easier there's only one hatch to defend from and you can pretty easily hold bathroom but it's really going to come down to the push through barrel where we see a lot of teams try and focus. But you see, there's a little bit of an X factor here from Purdue. Uh, Chief, you think you can point out what operator I'm talking about that might be the X factor here? My dapper friend himself, Hangman's operator, the Warden? Yes, that, that would be it. I do love me some Warden. He has a deployable shield after all, which is why he might find himself in the meta a little bit more. Valkyrie was being played a lot as an information operator because she had the option of a nitro cell, but more importantly, the deployable shield. And in competitive play, we actually saw a lot of players electing to not utilize that nitro cell and utilize the deployable shield to participate in utility consumption simulator. Now, as we said in map number one, utility consumption simulator has been reversed just slightly. And is this going to be a smoke plant rush? A lot of utility from the side of Illinois State is being sent down range from this west window. Flash dumps, smoke dumps, as well as concussion grenades. But they haven't cleared out Suicide Box. Well, this is an interesting play. You already know there's a warden on the board and that shield will be dispatched of. But now opting to use your smoked and stuns all in attempt to try and push and jump in through drug window. I don't like the odds here. I feel like Warden might be able to actually situationally use his gadget here and maybe pick himself up a frag. That being said, Fortress is not going to opt for that attempted rush through drug here as it will be a push from above inside a cafeteria for him and a couple of his mates. At this time, we still see a 5v5 situation and a minute 30 left to play. But uh, something you touched on was Valkyrie using her deployable shield and kind of opting for that over a nitro cell. Recently, when they just balanced a couple of these operators, she did get her deployable shield taken away and she now has impact grenades. Now, that's kind of a nerf, but it also might not be, depending on how much you impact trick. Same with Lumai. He lost his deployable shield and gained impact grenades. So there's now more of an emphasis on impact tricking, where you can have an entire team of impact grenades and you could deny so many of the hard breaching gadgets if you know how to use them and position them correctly look at this aggressive play from havoc he's already inside he's gonna hit the foot up beside him but again you have to remember that all has to hit chester up in order to down so it will do a liter of damage to him 
but not be able to kill him. Hangman will be dispatched up by Fortra as we hit under 40 seconds left to play. Toxic Babies are coming out from Providence here. From inside a drug, he will be dispatched up by the Cali of Ravik. We talked about playing that SMG 11 at close range, and that's exactly what he's doing right here. Snail is going to be there to try and get the refrag on the Poseidon, and it looks like the attack from Illinois is starting to play out, but Goose has something to say about that, but Mila is going to cut down Fortra as well. Now making it a 2v3 situation from a 2v5. Postplant situation now ensues as we see Mila get downed, and that will B. Goosemitty being eliminated by Snail again. Illinois State with a beautiful execute on the attacking side will win themselves their first attacking round here on Theme Park. I had to be very critical the way Purdue played this bomb site. What makes it so strong are the buffer rooms, not the bomb site itself. We basically saw Purdue box themselves in with their reinforcements and not create basically highways for the defenders to move in and out. And I also have to be a little bit critical of Hangman, who just sprinted at Snail when he was planning <laughs> into the crossfire. He realizes he's being shot by multiple angles and sprinted away. If you commit to a strategy and your strategy is getting kills, you either do it 110% or you don't do it at all. That indecision cost him his life. If he had a shotgun up and unbound shift w that could have gone differently because snail wouldn't have been able to flick around fast enough he might have still died to the window the pocket f2 but at least you would have had your shotgun active up and ready to fire but when you're just sprinting around that cash box like a maniac i hate to say you're not gonna do a lot of shooting that's an interesting way unbind your shift w key to make you not sprint I've actually heard a couple of people legitimately think about doing that because the amount of times people sprint in a gunfight where it gets them killed is quite a bit, but it still offers you a lot of mobility in terms of how you move around the map. So you can't just unbind it, but it is definitely a habit that a lot of players are in a, a very... I want to say controversial spot in that sense. <laughs> I, I personally think that it's a little bit stupid to think that you need to unbind and just stop the complete game mechanic to try and kind of alter your strategy. Just try and fix the bad habit. It'll take a while, but hopefully you'll be able to break it. And I think that just comes with playing a little bit more passive. But again, if you sprint it sometimes, it can actually win you some gunfights, put you in a better position. And we know, again, this game is all about timing and position. And uh, when you're able to sprint and put yourself in position faster or slower, again, that's going to prove to be very influential. Again, enough with me rambling. Back to the game. So I do want to just go back to the ramble topic for one quick second. If you truly are struggling with that and even a keycap puller, actually remove your shift key. So that way you consciously actually have to grab that switch if you want to sprint. Far too often, I think that scenario that it's just an, like a reaction, just a sprint. So that way your hand is going to go over to where your shift would be and you wouldn't find it because you have to hit the key. So that way you still have the advantage of sprinting. You're just gonna have to do a little bit more brain power to actually think about that. A couple of rosters I've been working with lately, I've had them do that and it's changed their entire way of actively swinging on attackers <laughs> as well as defenders. But now, truly back to the lobby, we have burned 90 seconds and the attackers haven't really accomplished much right now other than a lot of map control, but it isn't true map control as there's somebody sitting up and gone. Well, already looking at the person upstairs inside of Gong, he will be able to pick off Fortra. That will be Hangman credited with that kill. Goose is going to be holding inside of Armory, but Providence is going to cut down Havoc, and Hooked Up will be able to find the refrag onto Hangman. Still the men advantage in favor of Purdue here, as we hit just under a minute left to play, as Mila will be inside a drug lab. A beautiful shot on the Hooked Up will take him and eliminate him from that contention. The sprays through the wall cannot land the shots. It will be the Maverick of Patience getting that kill. It's all up to him, though, as Snail is now downed and bleeding out inside of maintenance here as Providence and Poseidon look to try and capitalize here. Po Poseidon will swing and find Snail, but also will swing will be Providence finding patience and Snail. He's very unhappy right now. Oh, poor Snail. Turn that frown upside down. And remember, you have two of your favorite casters casting your game, so that is an guaranteed reason to smile. People are talking about the 20-second meta, and well, 
at least in that round, it hasn't gone anywhere. The attackers opened up the throne wall in great timing. That was because the defenders basically prompted them into doing so. But after that, the attackers were struggling because they realized all the control of the map they had were contingent on the crash back from the defenders. And as soon as that crash came, it seemed like the attackers were absolutely perplexed. They didn't set up enough flank drones, and they didn't have crossfires to actively deal with those minigames. And it seems like map number two, the entire theme is crossfires and minigames. The IGLs just aren't identified. Defenders, protect your bombs from being that could also just come down to unfamiliarity with the map. Now, again, this is Illinois' map pick, and I don't know if maybe it kind of just went through the ban phase, and you're just like, oh, I, I'm pretty sure the other team will ban it, and you try and take that chance, and, well, unfortunately, that might not be the case. But again, Theme Park is a heavily defender-sided map, and when teams start to restructure sites with using Castle, using those rotates, reinforcements, it becomes that much harder to try as an attacker to push a defender-sided map. You look at other maps, such as, let's say, Canal. Canal is defender-sided, inherently. You see them, you see people redo sites with rotation holes and just completely make it in their favor. Mila looks like he's going to be placing a shield, hopefully, in the rotate here. He's having a little bit of difficulty. Hey, there we go. So now two shields at the top of yellow stairs, and... It looks like Hangman's going to not be in the vault this time. Instead, it's top of yellow. But I talk about defender-sided maps. They become even harder when you start to re restructure the site to help your team where it's supposed to, to confuse the enemy team. And when you are at this level of gameplay, you have those teammates who know what they're doing and how they can position themselves. It can definitely be very beneficial. But already, you're seeing a very aggressive take here from Illinois State inside of Control Room, and that will be the Cali onto the B wall inside of Initiation Room. Hangman's going to be playing the deployable shield here, looking in through Vault, trying to find the drone here. We'll be able to dispatch a bit, and now his position's known, but he's pretty comfortable sitting at the top of yellow between not one, but two deployable shields. We've been in this battle before. Hooked Up is going to now take control of oh, Wash. No. But will he actually spot out the positioning of the Purdue players? Now he will be able to scan those feet. That's going to provide some information. But the problem is the person that he scanned is currently in the bomb site. That was Mila hiding all the way over to the south. So sure, they have confirmed that there's a guaranteed person at least somewhere over there, but it might not be enough. An air jab is going to go around down range, but to be grabbed away immediately by one of those will my pancakes and the illinois state is starting to skip steps once again they're not confirming the location of any of that utility the air jab would have been instrumental in mitigating the aggressiveness of hangman so right now if you're doing your droning which it looks like illinois state is doing you realize that mila is the only one inside or relatively close to the B bomb site. If you put most of your pressure and your utility towards that side, you could easily get an execute onto the site here. Hooked up is going to find Goose Smitty, and that will be the Jaeger dead playing inside of Cafeteria. And that's a huge pick here, but Mila has the FMG9, a very potent weapon in the hands of him, which we've seen him use quite a bit in the past. Krabic now taking out the SMG-11, knows that there's one close left. We'll see if he goes for the wall bang, but here comes the smoke canisters. He'll be able to find one, but not be able to find the second one. Providence now with the echo in hand, will be able to echo the thermite here. And now we'll be able to take out Snail, looking for a second, he'll find Krabic as well. Hooked up falls in the altercation as well, as Patience the last one alive here for Illinois State as Hangman and Providence, the echo drones trying to prove to be a huge factor here. Completely concussed and disoriented, cannot find all the echoes. Providence will close out that round with a 3K as it looks like Purdue will be able to win another defensive round here. Once again, Illinois State went for a very linear push. They had no crossfires whatsoever until the swing and from break. As soon as they did that, that was the extent of their crossfires. And after that, Basically, like, we're just going to try to win gunfights. They dealt with break, but once they left the rotate from break, again, their push was linear because they're trying to deal with all of Arcade. 
and the Echo was just able to challenge both angles at the same time because Illinois State didn't coordinate. It sounds like I'm a broken record because Illinois State is making the exact same mistakes over and over again. They're not learning from it. Again, that is the most important thing you can do when you're a Defenders Rainbow Six Siege player. Actually, that's the most important thing you can do, whether or not you're playing Siege in life, doing homework, or your personal life. You should actively learn from your experiences and your mistakes. And the IGL of Illinois State currently isn't learning from the mistakes that they're getting here in CR6 and map two of this series. But it is a new round, and fortunately for Illinois State, they are going to be moving over to a map or a particular bomb site that they have actually won. This is the Quatchinary bomb site. Now, what's unique about Theme Park is Theme Park is the only or is only one of three maps that have bomb sites that you can utilize all four on. If you think about Consulate at one time, you could utilize all four of those. But sadly, CEO in professional play has completely fallen away because it's turned in to basically Window Repel Simulator. Now, Villa saw a little bit of play on the Quaternary Bomb site. Living Room had a little bit of love, but it has fallen out of player. Truly, Oregon, as well as Theme Park, are the only maps you're going to see Quaternary Bomb sites being utilized consistently. Well, we're back inside of Drug and Lab, which is the site of choice for Purdue here. You see Hangman, he's trying to contest that drug window here with hooked up, now repelling up to the roof. Here come the Cali Lances, and that will prove to be a little bit more difficult as they are very good at clearing that utility. Over two minutes left to play, still at 5v5, as it looks like we're trying to see if Illinois State can try and execute like they did last time, rather flawlessly on the attack. And side, side up to say about that, he'll swing and find Ravik as well. So now he's looking for another one here, sitting on the rotate by Drug. It's a 4v5 as Purdue look to be in the driver's seat this round so far. That was an extremely aggressive play. Almost a level of unbridled aggression. Now it did work, but that probably wouldn't have been the good strategy. Nitrocell is going to go up. It's going to confirm the thermite charge. You can see Snail, he basically wants to utilize it as a breaching charge. Try to grab as much holes as above as possible. But he could be bringing out more soft destruction if they had an action play. That is three breaching rounds as well as a traditional breaching charge. Or you can also use Hooked Up, who has a pocket shotgun. But nonetheless, the holes that the attackers made up with their bullets is going to find themselves a kill. That's a really good play here. Uh-oh, Mila's on the flank here. Can he land all the shots? The Thermite will be lit up, but Mila will also be lit up in that altercation. Poseidon will find a second onto Fortra for the round. Minute left to play here. It's a 4v3 favoring Purdue as they are looking to try and stop this vertical pressure from Illinois State which has been rather effective so far, especially with the Thermite charge in hand. Hooked Up is going to try and scan out Mila, and now Mila is being tracked by the Jackal. We'll have to fall all the way back to Arcade Stairs, but stalling time is all that she can do at this point as the Alibi rotating all the way back to site. 35 seconds of play, still a 4v3 situation as we see Snail trying to contest the vertical angle that he had created earlier. Hooked Up is going to melee a bulletproof camera, but that's going to ultimately be his undoing as Providence will pick off Hooked Up. Patience will pick up one onto Mila, but can't land the shots onto the Jaeger of Goose Smitty. The last one alive is Snail, and he's still above inside a cafeteria. Still not much to his name, and he's now going to be forced to rotate all the way, or maybe bait a few kills. Not all that much to be said here, as he will now just rotate all the way to the drug window. They know his location. He's got a swing. Can't land the shots, and he does land a few, but will not be able to get the kill and secure it. Purdue looking really strong here on Theme Park, especially coming back from a 5-1 here. As we hit the swap, Purdue will switch to the attack. Illinois State switches to defense here. And on a defender-sided map, a 5-1 split. Certainly not terrible for Illinois State, but they were hoping for a 2-4. And fortunately for Illinois State, they don't have to deal with attack unless we go into overtime. They can forget about their theme park attacks and now just focus on defense. Are we going to see a very similar strategy that Providence was bringing out? These big, grandiose rooms where you try to hold as much real estate as possible. Now, a lot of teams tend to hate theme park because it can kind of turn into a monkey fest. 
The reason Monkey Fest start is because the attackers aren't doing their homework. They're not doing their due diligence, and they're just trying to push from one avenue. And of course, the defenders are going to have a field day with you because they're basically going to put a ring around you, and it's just like shooting fish in the barrel. Illinois State was incredibly slow with their attacks. They pushed from one angle, and it was just feeding into Purdue. Now, it's Purdue's turn to attack. Hopefully, they can understand what was making them successful on defense, reverse engineer it, and apply it to why they're going to be successful on attack. If anything was very telling of the way that Cafe was played out from Illinois State is that they know defense and now they're on the momentum side. Now, necessarily speaking, they only have momentum because it is a defender side and map. If they lose Armory and Throne here or the first defensive round, they're definitely going to be put in a very tough spot where it would be Purdue at match point and Illinois State with one round with five rounds to try and make up in order to just tie and push to OT. So it's a really, really tough situation right now for Illinois State. There's a lot of pressure on them. And although it is a defender side of map, just relax, play your game, and you know what you have to do. It's just going to come down to if the attackers will be able to outmaneuver you. And you haven't really employed any of those huge strategies that Purdue was using. So I don't know, but so far the roam clear from Purdue is going very smooth. This province is droning in Goose Smitty, who is now looking to try and contest the person on Arcade. His hooked up is now rotating all the way to Drug, making sure that there's nobody inside of Air Hockey Table here to try and contest the roam clear still wasting a lot of time on the roam clear remember theme park is a huge map and it's not so easy even with five drones on the board to get as much intel as possible something that's a little bit terrifying if you're a fan of purdue are those two impact grenades in the back pocket of lesion so when purdue goes for one of the executes either on the side of barrels or in through control when the thermite places it it might be as undoing he has to place it in the particular position and also you couple that with invulnerable kai charges on the north wall which basically means the only way of clearing them is by sending a frag grenade down range the nade will go out and it will find its target. It's going to be a huge oversight by Illinois State for not burying their Kaids in positions where they could not be killed. He actually going to keep one in his back pocket, so no invulnerable Kaids whatsoever. The oversight becomes even larger. It might be Illinois' map pick, but they don't have a good understanding of how to hold this north wall. Well, there's a couple ways. I mean, you could do the invulnerable Kaids, but then that leaves you vulnerable for the other walls and they do it does seem like they're tricking that yellow wall here putting a huge emphasis on it but goose smitty knows that there might be somebody in 90 hall 40 seconds left to play still a 5v5 and they still haven't cleared the jaeger inside a drug but patience is going to be very patient here now trying to spray through the wall inside a cache there comes the nade snail will be downed and providence is getting this wall open here hooked up is looking to try and get the flank off here the trigger discipline on to Hangman. He will find one now. Prone knows that the Thermite's going to swing, but the Peeker's advantage too much for him to handle. P Patience is going to find Poseidon here, and Mila will be killed as a result as well. Here comes Illinois State on the rally here, but there is Ravik finding Providence. Snail will fall to Providence on that trade, but Patience is going to finish things out as Goose Smitty will be found. Round goes to Illinois State, and you can really amount and attest that one to the 22nd meta working out in their favor. And also another Ash who might be just holding down shift W again. And sure, that is a dire position to be. It's almost impossible to win. It's a 3v1 with so little time on the clock. But if you want to guarantee that kill on the Valkyrie, spreading is not the way of doing it. And the attackers were a little bit better, I would say, than Illinois State, but not quite enough at dealing with mini games. And something that's perplexing about these series is the fact that support players are constantly top fragging. It was Snail in map one on Cafe, and now it's Providence's turn. The Thermite players are just winning gunfights today. Maybe it's Peeker's advantage, as you said, or maybe they're just 
basically they have their back against the wall and they're just clicking heads nonetheless the entries need to be doing a little bit more now i've gone on record to say plenty of time the role of an entry isn't to get kills it's to take map control but we really don't see the entries doing that either yeah it, uh, very interesting to talk about those kind of things and when it comes down to it it's just going to be what ever they can really deal with it's almost i'm losing my train of thought oh do we break our mat today it's been a long day at work my friend hold on okay i'm back sorry all right so i like exactly how illinois state is setting up for this defense here and they have that deployable shield in waiting room and uh, you have the Jaeger to support them, but no will my, so you're already looking at a huge difference between Purdue and their defense versus Illinois State. They're not relying heavily on that will my. They're almost going for almost meta strategies, and we saw Purdue do a couple of different ones, which aren't necessarily the most ideal, but they worked for them. So the attackers attempting to get map control, but they're just trying to be maneuvering around the map, be as unpredictable as possible. It could work out well for them. Instead of doing the East Cash Tank, they're now going to be moving their troops over to a Cafe Tank. The problem with that is, do they have a crossfire? If they're just doing a linear push, it really doesn't matter if they're coming from the east or the west. You're going to find yourself in the exact same roadblock. And in professional play, it seems like we are constantly bringing that back. You attack from both angles. It's putting the defenders basically into this metal box, trying to compact it. And as soon as it's really compacted, the defenders just go pop. And hooked up is going to be the first one to go kaboom. Holding bullet holes and being very patient is going to be patience. I don't know how many times I can say that joke before it gets completely old, but he is not going to surrender that position, and that is pretty evident. We're going to see Providence, though. He's going to pick off Ravik, and that will be the smoke sitting on site. And already, you're seeing a very aggressive push from Purdue here, and it's proving to be very effective besides taking quite a bit of damage from Fortra inside of Vault. And here it comes, the push through the top of Yellow Wall and the drones. Now to follow for Purdue to get that extra intel. The Mute no longer able to deny that wall. We'll have to be forced into this office position. Nitro Cell is going to come out close, but there is not a single soul in that zip code. And already you're seeing this push from Purdue being very effective. Here come the frag grenades, though. It will now detonate near Fortra in the location, but not able to pick him off. Oh, Fortra will get the frag onto the side. Knows that one will swing as well, but there's the Peeker's advantage proven to be too much of a factor. The small hitbox from Ash no longer able to get those shots landed for Fortra. Plants coming down from Providence here with 30 seconds left to play. It's 4v2 as Purdue is now on the defensive side to defend that diffuser, and they do so very well. Patience and Snail are eliminated as Purdue hit match point here on Theme Park. And I actually spoke too soon. Purdue did set up their 180 degree crossfire. They did push from the west and the east. We saw a large amount of rotation, particularly that Zofia going over to Cafe. Now, Zofia did end up rotating all the way back over to Cash, but nonetheless, that was the right call. It wasted 60 seconds, but the bomb went down with 34 seconds on the clock. So it obviously didn't factor in too much into the attack. A phenomenal read by the IGL of Purdue, and hopefully they're able to basically replicate that as they try to take on the dorms once again. But are they going to be able to run the exact same strategy, though, or has Illinois learned from their mistakes? Well, on a defender side of map like Theme Park, it will be very difficult for Illinois State to come back from this. They'll have to win four consecutive rounds, and that does not include those sites that they have won already. They can, I, actually they can go back now that they lost once, they can go to any site, but they're going to opt for Bunk and Daycare here. I think it's a smart play to try a different site here. You haven't really leaned on it all that much, and it can prove to be very helpful here. You haven't chosen to go drug and lab, which we saw Purdue 
do very well. It, it really just comes down to comf comf comfort. Comfort. So. Stroke. <laughs> Words are hard, and sometimes casting is just as hard. Now you can see Illinois, they're going to be trying to put a lot of their castle barricades over to the west to shut down one angle of attack. That's going to be a nice line vector that the attackers can hold looking in to the A bomb site door. But if we saw the push coming out by Providence, that's not going to work out well. Now I have to put a little bit of asterisks into the air. We did see Illinois hold the office's bomb site first, and now they're going to be trying to go to their tertiary bomb site, which is dorms. And Purdue won't be droning in their entries at all. And unfortunate to go Smitty, he's going to be the casualty in that endeavor. For the time being, I think my co-caster is actually DC'd. We're having some OBS issues, so you're gonna be stuck with me, and you're gonna be stuck with patience over here on the extended roam into maintenance. His position is completely compromised. Pistol in hand, he's oh. able to find a headshot. Switching over to Maverick, more damage being dealt, but eventually Dang. being killed. He has found two kills, and he's done his job. A phenomenal showing. He's even dropping the BM, the GN's in chat. A well-earned GN at that. Well, when you get one tap by a deagle, it's it's pretty telling of a good night. And I agree with his analysis and chat BM, but still, again, at the end of the day, it just comes down to your positioning. And Valkyrie was in a good position to get those frags. She got two of them, cost herself in the process, but those are two crucial ones. Didn't get rid of the hard breach, we got rid of your Ash and Sledge, who are very very integral in getting that vertical pressure in trying to get these walls open but there's providence he's going to be trying to breach the wall here but maverick's going to have to do most of it with the frag grenade in hand but there's a nitro cell that could pop out here in just a second you will get detonated on the wall but not net the cave charge little do they know it's actually below oh maybe not uh-oh, we spoke too soon. There's your Nitra Cell. It's gonna go behind the attacker. No damage dealt whatsoever. And Stale has great micro positioning, but he's gonna be felled in that endeavor, and the attackers are just gonna completely find the scoreboard. The man advantage was in favor of the defenders, but all of a sudden, it has completely slipped through their fingertips. The crossfires, everything they worked so hard to achieve has now been forfeit. But fortunately for them, they still have two members of their team alive. They can still save this round Speak the sprint soon. away has not Speak worked whatsoever soon. everything has now officially crumbled the eiffel tower is down it is purdue winning map number two guaranteeing our third map that is a caster curse at its finest they have two people left though on their team yeah not anymore two seconds later they're all dead round goes to purdue and they'll be able to win out theme park pretty handily at seven two and Patience is apologizing to the sledge that he one-tapped, and rightfully so. I mean, to be fair, it's pretty disgusting. You don't see those kind of kind of plays in a, a while. So, um, map three, it's going to be Consulate, and we will take a short break, but we will catch you back with the action sooner rather than later. Don't go anywhere. Collegiate R6, we'll be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Collegiate R6. We took a little bit of an extended break, but that doesn't mean we aren't ready to get you right back into the action. This time, final map, map number three, Consulate will be the deciding map here between Purdue and Illinois State. Right now, it is tied up one-to-one. -one. First map would feature Illinois State taking a 7-4 to four victory on Cafe. Meanwhile, Purdue will strike back on Ca uh, Theme Park, excuse me, with a 7-3 to three victory. So both teams have been very, very well off on the way they've been playing these matches. Now, something interesting here. Nomad's not going to be the... I'm sorry, Thatcher's not going to be the first band. It'll be Nomad here. Uh, Chief, what do you have to say about the Nomad ban here? So, remember, the most advantageous part of the attackers is Window Repel Simulator. How do you hold Window Repel Simulator? Well, you utilize clay bars, or most likely, you're going to be utilizing Nomads. With Nomads unavailable, that's going to nerf, well, basically every single one of your Window Repel, and that actually might bring CEO as a viable bomb site In professional play, particularly in a CEO is just never played because as soon as the attackers have control of one of the two bomb sites, good luck retaking it. The only way of doing so is to start to fly out windows. As soon as you see a nomad ban, it instantaneously is going to prompt the Valkyrie ban because you do not want to have defenders run out with free information. So how are the attackers going to stop it? Hopefully they've done their homework and have learned good preset drones. Well, not even just preset drones. You can also use claymores, and there's a plethora of operators that you can take in order to uh, get those claymores. Uh, interesting decision here with Goose Smitty to take the Oryx, and I think he's going to stick it as well. Sledge looks like he's going to six pick. It'll be patience from the sledge to a unknown at the moment. But Echo will be sixed for a pulse from Mila, and Sledge will be sixed for a sledge here. Very, very tactical, man. Tactical decision. Attackers need to locate. Honestly, I'm okay with seeing a little bit of Oryx in play. Change up the pace if you need an operator to create rotations, or I could do it with this pocket pistol shotgun thing, as well as just. Flying through a wall. So you have a lot of fluidity there. Also, one of the best ways at countering the default plan in the B bomb site would be to fly um. up through the hatch. <laughs> Don't necessarily think that's the play. Did I miss something? Uh, yeah, Mila is just sitting all the way down in the kitchen by the table. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's trying to hide his pulse pick. That's my guess. Oh, maybe. True, true. That's a good point. This is, this is weird seeing him prone behind the table and kick back his sights all the way upstairs, but nonetheless. Maybe. Yeah, my guess is he was just trying to hide pulls for as much as possible. We're talking about denying the two bomb sites. Well, 
it could turn into an absolute slaughter fest upstairs if you're a defender. So again, you have to fan out as much as possible. You bring out Mila on the pulse. They have a cardiac sensor with built-in wall axe as well as that nitrous cell. But you're going to have to defend Mila for as long as possible. If he's downstairs on an island by himself, he will not be successful. I find it odd that there's only one person on site and B-Site is completely free. Attackers realize this and they could easily take the site here. They have the ability to stop the run out from yellow. And yeah, look, almost all members of Illinois State have been relegated outside of the west and south side of the map. It looks like they're going for a repel. They might try and repel in through CEO here, which could prove to be, not CEO, console here. <laughs> Looked up's gonna impact himself, Oops. and that'll take away half his HP. And yeah, that's just uh, that's actually the third time I've seen him do this today. Hey, Matt, just a heads up: explosives aren't really friendly to you, particularly when no, you absolutely not. Explosive. So, pro tip, ladies and gentlemen, if you have an explosive device. Please do not shoot it at a door frame literally a millimeter in front of you. That is our PSA for the day. And who is going to find the lesson again as it's going to be bullets in fact in their body. And it's going to be the hot take over here by Yellow. This is going to be the shock and a providence holding this real estate for as long as possible. Who gets answered to death with the Ash of Fortune. Well, there still isn't anybody on site, but Kravik is going to be below inside of Piano. Trying to contest the yellow push here, but Goose Smitty slowly crouch walking up through benches. He is jackal tracked though. His location is now completely known by the attackers. And that will force him off his location, but that will allow Mila with the nitro cell from below. That will be the jackal dead. Standing in one spot doesn't go well for you when there's a pulse on the board. Here comes the plant attempted by Snail here as the toxic babes and canisters from yellow and the smoke of Providence start to ring out here. Here comes the retake, the OS Hangman will be able to take out Snail, and just like that, the push falls apart from Illinois State with Fortra and Patience, the last two members on the attack side alive. And yeah, looks like they're just going to have to take a tactical timeout here. There's 20 seconds left to play, they don't have the diffuser, it's down on site, but Poseidon's going to cut down Fortra, and yep, Patience is just going to be very patient here, waiting and baiting kills at the front door. Hey, get some free stat pads. It doesn't hurt. I mean, he's currently sitting at quadruple zero. And I think a lot of people actually forget what that last zero means. It is actually objective play. So you earn that last zero is if you plant the bomb or defuse the bomb. So he's going to maintain at that quadruple zero for stat line at least for round one. Now, in professional play, Consulate is one of the two maps that is currently attacker sighted. It is actually Villa and Consulate that is attacker sighted, where in an NAL and, and EUL, no, it's actually no. a 50%. No, it's not close. Oh, wow. It's tech. I mean, call it neutral right now. And at least okay. if you're utilizing stage two and yeah, stage two of NAL and EUL, it's neutral. So that's unique. I didn't know that actually. That's really interesting to bring up. Yeah, so we're seeing a lot of rounds go 3-3 splits on Coast. But here, returning back to Consulate, we are talking about Window Repel Simulator makes Jack this map attacker sighted, <laughs> and it also makes CEO the bomb site that Purdue just won on defense basically impossible to hold. Obviously, they found a way. Their way was banning out the bomb Nomad. Yeah, but we're going to be I... going down to the secondary bomb site, which is basically. That Nomad Band is definitely going to facilitate and make it easier for defenders to hold that site. It allows you to run out, and it just causes the attackers to be a little bit more diligent and wary of those runouts. And I think that really played to produce strengths on that site. I don't know if uh, it will be necessarily one of the other types of kind of, I want to say interesting pushes but you know it, it'll pay out in the end uh looks like we're having a little bit of a skin dispute here but it, that is a legal skin it will be that esports one that we saw it was a t3 uh, not a t3 a t, it's not a t i don't even know it is allowed though because it's it's a it's a team skin so isn't it i think they call it the north america skin it's a skin for smoke I think is that no, the one that they're, oh, the they're, they're they're doing the Cade one, which is the EUL one. So there's the North American smoke, 
There's the EUL Cade. Then there's the APAC. What is it? I think it's. Is it Valk? Valk's yellow. I don't I think they're. I think they're. I think they're allowed though because you know, they they're esports skins and. Yeah, they, absolutely. So I, I don't think there's any issue here. It's not like they're gonna blend in at all. They're red, white, and blue. <laughs> and back to round number two, you can see the old meta of bucking vertically and just sending all your shotgun pellets down range and removing the electric gadget. But has he actually found Ooh. any impact? It's actually Migu Smitty finding the impact as he's able to flank upstairs, getting his kill. Now his position will be somewhat compromised and eventually be killed as he just overstayed his welcome a little bit too long. Yeah, Hooked Up is going to capitalize on that positioning here. He sees a gun floating. It's actually Activating just going to be a little bit of an interesting glitch here. As, uh, just want to make sure that that floating gun isn't a person. And uh, that's a good way to establish that kind of pressure. The minute 20 seconds left in the round, still a 4v4 as the wall is now getting opened up by the ace. That will be Snail doing most of that damage there. The entire right side of the garage wall is open as Fortra... Taking a little bit of damage, that'll be Hangman from above on the Jaeger. Making his presence known here in the side of Party Room. Now rotating towards the top of Spiral Stairs as Kravik and Ash of Fortra. Trying to play these vertical angles and pick off the people playing inside a pillar and pipes respectively. Doesn't seem to be anybody to that location here. And I kind of like this deployable shield setup. I don't know if we can maybe get a better look at that. Just because it kind of really forces the defense, the attackers to funnel into these really hotly contested areas. But we are seeing a flurry of kills come out here as Mila will pick up hooked up. And we also saw patients fall on that as well. See, Mila, pick up another one. Fortra will fall as well. 20 seconds left to play. A 2v2 ensues a Snail and Havoc against Providence and Mila left. here. As the Goyo and Smoke and the Buck and Ace, the last four members of this lobby alive. Snail's getting that diffuser down with Ravik on the cover. Looking to try and cover this Goyo pushing up here, but he's going to get the plant down. Snail now rotating towards Black Car. It's all up to the retake here, but Milan's going to find a third onto Snail and this Ravik inside of Kitchen. Knows that there might be one close, and it's a game of Ring Around the Rosie. A pocket full of SMG 11 bullets will be Providence putting him down to Ravik. That'll be Mila on the diffuse here. Round goes. To Purdue, and they look very poised and ready to win out this map. That was literally a game of musical chairs. The attackers were on yellow stairs as well as white van. They decided like, hey, we want to take control of cafeteria. We're a little bit hungry. Let's get a snap. So they just started to walk towards cafeteria. And then the defenders were suddenly found themselves on yellow stairs, white van with control of the diffuser. The attackers made an absolute blunder, realized their mistake, and the defenders returned to defenders. What makes Consulate attacker sided and so strong, as soon as the attackers get the bomb down, they can just leave, go straight out to the grapes, hide in some tiny hidey hole, and good luck killing an attacker with an ACOG or a two-time sight out in the grapes, prone, holding a pixel. Your SMG-11 is just not going to cut it. Instead, the attackers just wanted to basically be defenders and walk into where the defenders were. A huge oversight, and what could also be an oversight is the fact that we're going to be seeing the quaternary bomb site. Now, statistically, this is actually the second best bomb site in this map, being the first one, the tertiary bomb site, which is press room, which currently isn't being utilized. Now, this is a very difficult site to hold simply because it requires the defenders to do a lot of prep, particularly prepping the entire floor of the A bomb site, removing as much of it as possible, and also destroying the one table that is Somp, which is currently in the southwestmost side over by Poseidon. Yeah, I couldn't tell you anything about strategies for Tellers and Archives just because it's a site that I don't see very often, and you're looking at teams who know how to set up these sites to help them, but... Yeah, you talk about destroying a lot of that floor. It'll just make it a lot easier for Pulse. We've actually, I've actually seen a couple of Pulse bans on Villa and Consulate just because of how potent he can be with his gadget and the nitro cells. It's It makes the floor a complete minefield. And I talk about those free plays, those vertical angles, IS. I, you could just have 
an entire 20 minute long video of me saying vertical angles, vertical pressure. Because I stress it so much, it's basically what Siege is. And on a map like Consulate, you want to take as much of it as possible. We're seeing Haravik. He's going to be trying to push down Yellow here, make his way into Garage. And this is actually very strange. They've reinforced the entirety of that Garage wall. Uh, they, they already know they have to waste time getting it open, but there's not anybody even holding close to it. Uh-oh, Harabic could be caught off guard here as the Mira is in play from Goose Smitty. This is a soft Mira here. Um, I, I, I don't like that. It's high risk, high reward, and I'm in the same boat you are, Matt. I don't think that's the most advantageous thing in the world. And we've actually seen a lot of attacking rosters do this linear no take way. through he the basement. No way, he got a kill. But... It works out in the end, trades between both of the rosters, and we find ourselves with eight members alive in the server. So, nice flurry of kills, but we're gonna see the attackers actually change up their strategy. They realize that pushing those nitro cells basically all downstairs in the archive side isn't going to be the play. They've caused enough of a ruckus, and now they're gonna try for their primary objective, which is planning in the A bomb site. Uh, it's kind of the alter option but you know there's still a pulse on the board i would be very worried to try and take that pulse vertical i i know he's got the heartbeat sensor you can figure out where he is with the sound cues but he will be able to get you in those heartbeats it actually looks like snail is trying to get a plant down patience is on the cover here and he will be able to take out hangman bunch holes here from hooked up are trying to get these nice long established angles Poseidon has something to say about that snail will be cut down a 3v3 situation ensues as now it looks to be the defender trying to retake site. Providence will be eliminated by Fortra and it's all up to Poseidon and Goose Smitty. Goose Smitty no longer a factor as he's cut down and Poseidon to follow on that. Illinois State finally win their first round here on Consulate and they do it in a very well executed fashion. I have to be extremely critical of Purdue. That was an incredibly bad way of holding the a bomb site they set up all their holes and then basically the nitro cell pulse hits a part that cannot be destroyed well it can be destroyed and he destroyed the table but you have to destroy the table before the plant ever goes down that's the huge mistake you basically as an attacker you vault on the table then you vault on the shelving unit and you can't be destroyed whatsoever from a nitro cell from underneath Fortunately for the defenders, they set up a bunch of holes in the floor to counter that exact spot. Defenders but Pulse didn't utilize it. He just attackers. saw the cardiac sensor, got tunnel vision, and absolutely wasted his utility. He should have called for help, or more importantly, he should have got off his pulse sensor and actually shot the planter instead of wasting his utility. That oversight cost them the entire round. And I hate to call out one tool, but that one single tunnel vision narrow-minded play cost him round three yeah that that's a good way to put it i mean there's not really much else you can say about that but you also have a smoke on the board and i'm not sure they actually brought him last round but that can also deny those post plant situations so something to keep in mind is you also have a goyo too goyo is an option to deny those plants as well and i can't wait to see tachanka on that kind of situation where you can use his incendiary grenades to put them up through the floor and he'll be able to stop the plant. He would actually be able to cover the entirety of Tellers. Like, I don't think we understand how much of an impact Chanka will have once he is no longer quarantine fans. Just because his gadget is is so good. In a very well-coordinated team, he, he is absolutely potent. He's gonna be a very, very tough menace to deal with. What I always find interesting about operators, it's almost impossible to tell how they're going to factor in. I mean, after all, we all thought Cali was going to be one of the most broken OP operators ever released. We know that's Ooh. not the case whatsoever. And the only person that's lobby that is OP is Goose Smitty, who is able just to find wall bag headshots just like that across three different maps. And it seems like the attackers of Illinois State are just struggling to deal with this monster. Yeah, Oryx is definitely a monster. He is a superhuman strength behemoth. And when you have a gun in his hand, too, it, it, he's just even more potent. Fortress is going to actually use an ash charge to take out that prox mine. 
I would have probably shot it. Your ash charges are a little bit too crucial to try and uh, just waste them like that. Havoc is going to dispatch of Poseidon, though, and that is a, a good frag. That's your mute off the board. Somebody who can offer a lot of... Uh, Difficulty when it comes down to those late round pushes. Providence is gonna pick off Ravik though on the refrag, and that will be the smoke capitalizing on the positioning. A three of the four situation ensues here as Illinois State is looking to try and execute onto site, but they have not cleared the pulse below, and this could be a fatal mistake. The thing that Illinois State has done very well is the fact that they've opened up Bosco's spot. Now, the Milo is going to spot a couple players with that Pulse Cardiac Sensor, and where they're standing over in paper is actually a soft floor. If the Nitro Cell went up, it would have been a free double kill. Oh, now, that yeah, obviously no. didn't work out at all, and Snail might actually be planning the bomb. He has control of the chassis, and there goes the bomb down. There are still two smoke grenades in the back pocket of Providence. One's going to go down range with a pre-fire through the wall and finally Nitro Cell is going to confirm Snail. It's complete chaos in the lobby as everybody's going to start to basically just fall one by one. But Pulse is alive and active. He's providing so much information and relaying it to his teammates and it's going to force Illinois State to basically grab the bomb and try to plant in a new location. There's no rotation over and through Khan and it's going to be the SMG 11 against the world able to line up two and save the round for Purdue. Purdue is looking really strong on their defenses, and even though they let them take control of site, they didn't let them plant the bomb. It was a really good post-plant, uh, not, excuse me, a good plant prevention method from Purdue that really stopped uh, Illinois in their tracks. They were not able to really do anything. And something I want to mention was there wasn't that much repelling from... Illinois. They really just focus on taking an admin printer side take and pushing that way. That was their strategy, but again, they seem to just love their tunnel vision. They don't understand the macro meta, and they're just constantly just trying to just drive a knife deeper into the carcass of Purdue. Why Purdue is alive, Dang. and Purdue just kicks them away and just kicks exactly. the knife out of them. So we're going to have to see them try to change things up. That was a pretty graphic That's analogy. A, yeah, wasn't it? graphic and vivid way to describe the way that Purdue is uh, beating Illinois State right now. Um, I would I would hope that they're not getting stabbed because we don't endorse violence or any kind of stabbing here. No stabby moods. So I, I would prefer not to stab Purdue. The only Purdue I'd want to be stabbing is a Purdue chicken. What? <laughs> that was quite a roller coaster. My analogy was bad, and yours just goes into the deep end. But let's return back to somewhat of a chaos, or less chaos. And well, Purdue's going to make more chaos as they have yet to reinforce the garage wall. They're going to have to call over a lot of hands. That's going to get accomplished in the end. It was looking a little rocky there. Oh my lord, what a round five. Well, it is going to be a garage hole here from the side of Purdue. It looks like Kravik is going to be putting a lot of bullets down range towards the Cade and not really connect with much there. And you have to think about how much of an impact it's been to have Buck lose his ACOG and go down to a 1.5 scope, not even a 2.0 at that, just because his gadget revolves around him making holes and holding long angles and without that ACOG he has been pretty un under valuable you just have to look at it and realize that there's a lot of different gameplay changes that come with changing sites just because of the way that the meta is shaping out could be seeing an interesting altercation here between hangman and fortra Oh, oh, Hangman spotted out by the Jackal here. Hooked up is going to see through his sight and kill him. I almost <laughs> sweared. I was trying not to swear. Naughty, naughty words. You don't want to get the FCC on you. 
And it looks like it's just going to be a bulldozer for Illinois State as they find all the offsite pressure. They're going to start to push their way on through. It's a lone SMG of uh -oh. and bro. 1v5 is able to find one, but he's going to be forced to retake above him, trying to basically utilize the hold that Illinois State worked so hard to achieve against them. He found one, unable to find the two. Illinois State is going to be back in this game as they've won two rounds of attack, accomplishing their goal. Well, they could easily accomplish much more than just their goal here. If they win this next round, it will be a 3-3 split. But definitely, that last attacking round really played out well for Illinois State. And you could really just credit it to the way that they executed and got that breach open. The frags, the positioning from the attackers was absolutely flawless. They did not let the defenders rotate. And if they did, they had somebody there to cut them down. So instead of going to the tertiary or the quaternary bomb site, which was split, we're going to be seeing the cafeteria garage bomb site come back once again. What went poorly for Purdue was simply the fact that they were playing as individuals Defenders off site. You add basically the jackal into that mix, and good luck holding your off site pressure. You have to be very careful of your micro positioning. And when you put yourself in a corner with no hope of rotating, talking to you, Hangman, Mr. Jaeger, he was basically basically dead on an island. There is no way he's surviving that gunfight unless it's a miraculous play where he just gets the better of the attackers upstairs. The likelihood of that happening is just not high enough. So we're gonna have to see Purdue, instead of hold the third floor, maybe they do an extension or a staged room where they snipe away a lot of Illinois State's drones and then retreat back downstairs to their basement where hopefully they've done their due diligence. There's hardly any drones whatsoever from Illinois State. There's hardly any time and Illinois State should have to face check everything. I mean, that's kind of the way that some rounds play out, but hopefully they will be able to realize that they're back downstairs in basement. They're bringing the ace, they have the buck and the jackal for the roam clear. This is a pretty standard meta lineup here from Illinois State on the attacking side. Meanwhile, if you look on Purdue's side, they're opting to bring that Goyo. And so far, we haven't seen Goyo play much of an impact other than his role as a fragger. He really hasn't denied a lot of that area, but hopefully that will all change here because we know that these guys will play very aggressive on the attacking side, and those Goyo shields could help aid on that attempted rush from the attackers. Goose Smitty is going to dispatch of one of the drones inside of Courtyard, and we also talking about denying a lot of space. You have a Maestro here. We didn't see him in garage last time so this could prove to be a little bit more beneficial here it's now a maestro cam spotted out for illinois state and a deployable shield most likely a goyo one on yellow to try and support that trick from the actually there is no wall denial okay that's interesting now the reason a lot of teams have actually gone away from wall denial is simple you take control of piano relatively quickly the wall denial is going to be sniped away if you bring out more operators that counter the actual egress into piano you actually might accomplish the exact same thing without a bandit or a kai but it seems like purdue has kind of gone away from that and they're just trying to hold linearly denying oh. drones with that mozzie pest a duel to the death as mila is going to say a little bit of bullets down range with the vector but there's nobody quite home unable to actually line his crosshair up well, it's still a 5v5 as we hit just over a minute left to play in this round. And Fortress trying to get these vertical angles established and maybe get rid of that shield on top of the box here inside a garage. But instead goes for the Maestro Cam, just as useful. And remember, Ash now has three breaching charges, but has lost all of her stun grenades and favors a Claymore. I think that one of those changes makes her more of a vertical operator in terms instead of just having that fragment potential. Hooked up is going to cut down Mila, and Goose Smitty will now be also eliminated via patience. And already, the attack from Illinois State is proving to be very beneficial. Poseidon has something to say about that. Answers back to the Alda, and it's 81 bullets. Fortune will fall. Hangman is also eliminated by Havrick, and Snail falls to Poseidon as well. Providence is also cut down during all that action, as Hooked Up will be credited with that frag. It's all up to Poseidon in the 1v3 situation here with the Alda. Anybody can do it, but most likely it's going to be him. Not in this sense. Patience will cut him down. Round goes to Illinois State. They go to a 3-3 split here on Consulate.
a very good situation to be in. Now, conventional T3 wisdom would say this is a huge landslide victory for Illinois State. But again, if we return back to Pro League statistics, utilizing CGG Stage 2 of NAL and EUL, this map is attacker sided. A 3 3 split is normal. The defense is winning 48% of rounds, which means it's a 52% win rate for the attackers. So nothing too crazy if we're going with that storyline. However, in Collegian and in T3, that storyline doesn't always answer all of our questions. So it's going to be really on Purdue. Um, How well are they going to be attacking, utilizing <laughs> the entire map and those window repels? I, I am very curious to see this because they have opted to go for a lobby and they have a mirror. Um, I, I, I personally don't know any mirrors that would be helpful. The Unless one in the you put them chamber. upstairs. So, you, so really? what they're going to do, they're going to put the mirror in the antechamber by big bathroom, and they're going to leave the wall soft. That way you can directly challenge the circle door or double door downstairs. You can utilize, you can open the top of it, throw smoke grenades or nitro cells downrange. And a lot of really? teams are also going to be either putting it in Bosco spot or in con. It's actually going to be in con for the second one. So I like the way, it, oh, they won't be utilizing that at all. They've completely reinforced it which means the mirror windows can be placed elsewhere. Could be facing towards stage of the a box. There's one facing towards console right now. See, this is where I, I question it because now they've extended themselves way far upstairs. Who's gonna hold that mirror all the way upstairs in that connector? You don't really have... See, I understand fanning out is important, but at a certain extent, you have to realize that holding one room might be more beneficial than losing bodies all across the map. I understand you can win your ones, but when you have an entire team of five full roam clearing you out, which we know that Purdue can do, evident of their last few maps, it could really be very difficult to do such things. Now, you do have to have some utility upstairs because very similar to cafe reading room, if you don't hold upstairs, the attackers will just take vertical control and absolutely bully the bananas out of you. So the defenders are going to try to hold as much map real estate as possible, utilizing smoke grenades coupled with deployable shields. But bad use of utility from the attackers this time, as they send an impact grenade down range to destroy the shield, but they kill a drone in their process, and the man with the drone, Hangman, is also going to be failed, but fortunately Providence is able to get the refrag. Well, Goose Smitty has already found his way into Long Hallway. Hooked up is going to be playing inside a connector. Snail's going to swing with the shotgun. Takes two shots towards the Ash, but cannot land any of them. Besides, it's going to put a frag grenade down range. It's going to fall through the hatch and render itself useless. And there's the swing from the Ash of Goose Smitty. He will find Snail, but quickly dispatched of by Hooked Up. But he will be refragged by beside a flurry of kills and ultimately left standing after the dust settles will be Rabbit and Patience, but no longer Rabbit because he will be eliminated. A 1v3 a situation ensues and it's the Mira versus three members of Purdue. She's stuck in a very bad position in bathroom. She can rotate through the top hatch, but she's gonna elect to stay on this Mira window, hold her ground, hold the line, try to fortify it as much as possible. But the ceiling above her is gonna start to be removed and the attacker is gonna rotate Providence on over to hot drop into the B bomb site and go for the plant. Now Mira knows that she has no option of hiding. She has to get aggressive. So Patience is gonna work her way down to the basement, utilize that nitro cell if the plant goes towards the west, but it's not gonna be the case. So she realizes her only option is going upstairs, moving through the yellow staircase to actively deal with the disco box hole, but she's wasted far too much time as we move to a post plant with 45 seconds left on the clock. This is nearly impossible for the mirror here. She has absolutely no intel, but that's not going to stop her from dispatching a Poseidon who is on his cam. Unfortunate timing for him, and now she's got to peek out connector window, and a nitro cell on the windowsill will not be able to connect. She's still trying to throw one out towards main lobby. Oh, did she see a bit of a... Oh, come on, you saw her! Yes, Providence will be killed. It's a 1v1. It's winnable now all of a sudden, but there's no time left. Mila's gonna be playing inside of Visa, and it's a good positioning. Trying to see if he sticks it here. Oh, he doesn't. The round's gonna go to Purdue, but Patience is gonna finish off Mila just to pad the stats there. So technically, he clutched the 1v3, but cannot able 
is not able to get that bomb defused. Actually, if Patience stuck the defuser, he would have won the round. Purdue wouldn't have been able to get that kill. He can't shoot through circle desk. He would have had to sprint to set up a line of sight. And there is two seconds left of the diffuser. Remember, pros don't fake. And if the fake didn't come through, the defenders would have run the round. A huge blunder that might cost them the entire series. And this is going to force Illinois State to change their bomb site up entirely. Going upstairs to the dreaded CEO office and something that T3 players as well as collegiate players just seem to struggle to understand is the importance of window repels, the crossfires they set up, and how oppressive those crossfires truly are. And to make things even more chaotic, we're going to be seeing a rook as well as a frost. Well... I actually kind of like the Rook pick here. Not so much the Frost, but I'll touch on that in a second. The Rook pick is actually pretty influential here. Not just because his armor gives you a chance to win more gunfights, just because you, you even saw it a couple of those rounds previous where people don't have to aim for the head in order to kill people. Where you want to put as many bullets into people's bodies as possible. Now, headshots are the name of the game, and if you can get them, it's beautiful. They they work great. So, a Rook Armor will give you a lot of... A lot of an advantage to take a lot more gunfights here. But, in the case of Ravik, I don't think spawn peeking is going to... Okay, so they're both spawn peeking. These guys have absolutely no fear in their eyes. And I, I knew the Rook was going to spawn peek, but I wasn't expecting the Vigil to. Pretty common spawn peeks between these two. Snail is, uh... Snail is not having a good time here, as Hangman will be able to dispatch of him. A little bit of a questionable decision on the side of Snail, but uh, he's probably kicking himself for that one. Hopefully he didn't have any PC troubles, because it, it kind of looked like it. So Matt, you know what he was doing, right? He was trying to find the vault. He was trying to find the, like space bar animation so he can jump up he couldn't find it so he was just staring does, at it does, and got does, killed does he, and then he, he blames the game buddy friend i know we cast in the same leagues that one's on you chief that wasn't on the game so you, just, you learned your position so i'm i'm almost certain that they fixed that vault animation and you actually can't vault up there anymore so he he was he was he was dead anyway. It didn't he was matter. Doomed. He was doomed from the start. Whatever he was doing it is not not gonna work out. But that being said, he's frost. So his frost mats are still in spots that could be influential to the round, but at this level of gameplay, you shouldn't be dying to frost mats. And same with cap can traps. Uh-oh. Did you see the debate on Twitter this week about how viable frost maps are? It got the entire Siege community's panties all just basically messed up. Just like that beautiful kill from Vigil. But he's stuck over here in the visa office. He won't be able to rotate. But that actually doesn't seem like Purdue wants to deal with him at all. They're just going to keep him down there and try to go for a plant over in Bosco's spawn. But Fortress worked his way through as it looks like that's going to be the apex spot for Fortress. He's going to try to die in that spot it's not gonna matter oh, though it's as it's gonna be all of purdue fighting the kill feed and vigil's gonna have to leave visa well the vigil's in a very very bad spot hangman is in a frost mat inside a bathroom goose smitty can pick him up though and kravik's gonna be forced to retake site here spraying through where the frost mat could potentially be yeah you're not gonna get anything there now it's time to just farm a few kills but right now purdue is in the driver's seat they, they, they've kind of won this round. Harabit can't really do anything here. And yeah, he will get cut down by Hangman. That's two consecutive attacking rounds on a, a map where teams have been struggling to get attack, attacker rounds. So, I mean, you're looking at a very, very influential map here to aid Purdue in their pursuit to victory. Won't say they've hit it yet, but they're definitely riding the ship to do so. And again, this storyline is starting to scream that we will be emulating Pro League. This map is starting to look a little bit attacker sighted. And you can really see why. It's difficult for the attackers to get into the building. And if you put frost mats, it apparently makes it even more <laughs> difficult. But once they actually have control 
of the map, the defenders are just in kill boxes. There's absolutely nothing they can do right. other than swing. And they seem to be peeking in the wrong direction because of defenders all the different bombs. angles the attackers can hold, particularly CEO. If you're a T3 attackers team, truly, you need to stop going to that bomb site because as soon as the attackers have control, good luck winning a 363 crossfire. You're basically like a rat in a boa constrictor and anaconda. They're just suffocating you and just tightening the ball around you till you eventually get shut down. That, that, that's one way to put it. Um, I would agree with you that there are a couple of situations that have unfolded where Purdue is kind of strangling the life out of Illinois State in the way that they are attacking the, these defenses that they're setting up. Now, so far, I have not really agreed with the Mira pick here. These are very standard default Mira strategies, and they'll work, but for how long? They won't stall enough time. You have two wall denials here with a bandit and a cave, maybe even a third if you want to count Mew as well. In my opinion, if you're struggling on Illinois State on the defense, go for heavy drone denial between the Mew and the Mozzie. Well, I think we switched off a of Goose Smitty for just a moment, but he will be able to pick off hooked up off of screen. So that's the Jaeger dead. And I talked about the Rome game from Illinois State. One of the main ways you can stop Purdue from Rome clearing is to play the drone denial operators play that mute play that mozzie you want to try and deny as much intel as possible a curious nitro cell is going to be sent down range there is absolutely nobody home where the nitro cell landed but there are individuals home over in banana and the rotation will be caught out illinois state is playing this map as individuals they're not playing this cohesive unit and they're dying as individuals. You need to have your mates back, particularly on these extended roams. The moment that you try to just run around this map as a single individual, you can see Purdue just puts them in a vice grip and they get shut on down. Now, fortunately for Illinois State, Fortra is able to find a kill as well as down Providence, but he's in a position where he could be rezzed. Purdue's gonna do their homework and try not to actively challenge that until they know the coast is clear. A minute and 15 seconds left to play in this 3v4 situation favoring Purdue with the attack and the vertical pressure now in their favor. It's going to force Illinois State to try and contest this pressure that is being attempted from Purdue. Snail will try and cut down the sledge on the top by anti-chamber cannot land any of the shots the metal bars now in the way still looking to try and establish some kind of attack here is still purdue they have no linear pressure to their name they've still used a lot of these vertical angles to help them facilitate this potential linear push which looks like providence is now doing with the hibana pellets outside of the garage breach which is now completely open 25 seconds left to play and we now see most likely the fatal funnel of the 22nd meta here they come pushing into white van it will be fortra cutting down hangman looking to try and capitalize again a flurry of kills are coming out here but left standing after the dust settles is going to be providence and poseidon patience trying to strike back here but fortra is going to fortra is going to find a triple as he finds providence Poseidon, the last one alive, will cut down the downed Mira and Fortra as well. Snail is defusing, though. He has no idea. Poseidon, oh, he didn't stick at the nade. It's going to flush him out of his position. Snail's going to push up and find him. Snail doesn't stick the defuser then, but now sticks it here. The round goes to Illinois State, and they win out this map. Not map, this site. Wow, what a spicy <laughs> turn of events. And the probably the best bomb site as an attacker to hold in a post plant is Garage. We said this earlier. As soon as the bomb goes down, you basically go out somewhere in the grapes, you hide, you hang out, and you just hold a prone angle, you hold a pixel peak, and good luck ever touching or getting close to that bomb when you're a defender. But the thing is, 
the attackers seem to really want to have control of cafe. They absolutely love their cafe control. Like I said earlier, maybe they just want to get a quick snack, but they keep losing to the exact same position. Purdue won a round in that scenario, and now it's Illinois State turn to win a round in that scenario. But we're gonna see a completely different bomb site. It's going to be, I guess, the primary bomb site for Illinois State. Press room lobby coming. I think one of the main things that we're seeing this rook pick here is definitely to favor that ACOG. You only have realistically one defender with a high rate of fire weapon with an ACOG, and it's Rook. Still, I don't think that he is warranted as a pick just because of his scope. Now, this is where you would normally take a dock. You take the dock for that ACOG scope instead of the Rook, just because the dock offers you a lot more versatility in healing your teammates and reviving your downed teammates from a distance. Still, the 1.5 is a good sight, but on the MP5, it is very lackluster. So I think in the discussion for uh, balancing, I think Doc deserves a 2.0 scope, and I'm sure a couple of other people agree with me in that sense. And... I think the 2.0 would discourage spawn peaking, but I don't think it would completely get rid of the potential for it. You know what's really killed spawn peaking is the runout timer. The three second runout timer being removed. Oh, I love one. that. Oh, I that's one of my that. least favorite things. I absolutely well, just Well, you see, I, I'm one of those guys who doesn't like to play super aggressive, and I kind of prefer when the defenders stay inside the building and, you know, kind of defend what they're trying to defend, not turn into attackers. Because a lot of times in, in ranked and even just general gameplay, it seems like the defenders and attackers, it's literally just attackers versus attackers, or the attackers sit and spawn because the defenders have become the attackers. I, I don't know. I think that that was a huge, a good play to get rid of that that two second timer now for a one second gauge because there should be no reason for it. That's just my opinion. Besides, gonna cut down patience and we'll go back to Chief's opinion. Well, I went from being a comp player IGL to being super analytical and piecing the game apart to an absolute ranked monkey flying out windows of the Valkyrie. So obviously, I'm not a big fan of this strategy, and it might be the defenders finding on more impacts in this round as they're going to be holding green banana. That might not be the play, though. The attackers are going to attempt to alleviate that pressure, particularly coming up from that buck. Is gonna be sending that skeleton key down range. With the defenders being fanned out, they might have the avenue to push on through and actively deal with a double door as planned. Hooked up is gonna find himself in a very precarious position over in closet. His micro positioning is gonna be as undoing as he rotates over to default. Well, it's a 4v3 situation as Illinois stay on the other end of the stick, per se, as they are not finding themselves an advantage, and Woo! they won't be able to find an advantage here as Goose Smitty is going to get a nice shot onto Fortra. It's all up to Snail and Harabic as the Legion and the Pulse, two members who can do a little bit of damage, but not enough. And yeah, it's not going to be enough. Hangman is going to pick off both of the last two members of Illinois State. Purdue pushes to match point here. They only need one more in order to win the round. What skin is that on the Pulse? No I'm idea. Curious. I've never no. seen that one. Absolutely no idea. Let's take our lessons from round nine and attempt to apply them to round 10. What helped Illinois State win round nine as they actually played as a team. They played as a roster. They got kills as a roster. And then in round 10, they went back to their monkey strats, playing as individuals and dying as individuals. If they want to be successful in this best of three series, they have to identify their problems and push together as a team bringing a clash together actually might be the answer to their prayers but it's gonna again force members of the defending unit to play around that clash they're gonna be six picking into a lesion trying to provide a little bit more information in the long run trying to determine where the attacker push is coming from yeah, I, I like the decision to not stick to Clash here, especially on a site like Console and uh, Party. It's, it's not going to be beneficial. There's not enough room for the Clash to move, and enough angles for her to be covered in a safe manner. In my opinion, you could realistically try and hold Long Desk, but 
even then, you can still get cut down by being shot in the back. I don't like the clash pick here, but I know a couple people could disagree with me. And I personally think it was a smart play. So Illinois State opting for a lesion instead. A little bit more impactful in terms of stopping Purdue and this really, really ferocious rope clear. Purdue is going to find themselves on match point, series point, game point. This is incredibly important for them. But they do have a little bit of wiggle room. They have some buffer room in this round. If they lose CEO execute, they will still have another bomb site to execute upon before we move into overtime. But it is imperative if you're a fan of Purdue that you have your fingers crossed. They're able to end this series here and now. And it's all going to stem from the early drone economy of Purdue, clearing the entire east side of the map getting control of admin, and then starting to push their units down range. Well, Goose Smitty is doing just that as he is now spraying Start towards right admin printer tape. And Providence is going to be repelled on printer window. And you talked about the repel game really favoring the attackers, and it does. You don't necessarily need to win on console, consulate, console site in order, oh my goodness. In order to sometimes win on the console site, you don't necessarily even have to enter the building. You could win it from propels. The only time you might need to win it is if you're trying to get a plant down. But there's a lot of times where you can just repel on windows and kill the entire enemy team and they won't even know what hit them. So we're gonna see Illinois State basically retreat all the way over to the west. And we're talking about these kill boxes and just compressing the defenders and so far the defenders have find themselves in that exact scenario snail is going to take a little bit more damage from that ash breaching launcher and find himself under 50 hp he is in a two shot kill window so well placed bullets from the attackers will be as undoing but his patience utilizing those well placed bullets sending them all the way downtown through long bar and finding poseidon those frag grenades will no longer be a factor here in what could be the final round. A great way of alleviating the pressure from Bosco's spot as Snail continuously plays it. This deployable shield is an angle where it will help him. And it it's not necessarily the best one, but, you know, I, I, there's not really much you can do. You can't move it now at this round. Hangman is going to cut down one. Gooseman is going to find patience. He'll find Snail as well. A double kill for him here as it's Ravik and hooked up the last two members alive. Hooked up is going to find Hangman with just under 25 seconds left to play. It's a 2v3 situation. Now post plant as Providence has the bomb now completely down. It's the attackers and defenders who have to swap position. Goose Smitty is going crazy as he finds a triple onto Ravik. Can he find the 4k onto Hooked Up or will he be able to clutch out the 1v3 situation? There come the invert repels and he knows the location of Goose Smitty. He'll pick off one. Find a second onto the round for him. Knows there's one in connector, but he is so lit up. It might not prove to be helpful to see him in a position where he can win out the engagements. There's no time left. He's got to go for the defuse now, but even then the music's ticking down. It's going to be Purdue winning out this series here for the consulate map. And it seems like at the end of that phenomenal round, we started to lag. We dropped a few seconds behind, so we do sincerely oh, apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. We were both My 10 bad. seconds off. That happens with our stream, how we're sharing clean feeds. But nonetheless, it was a great showing from Purdue. They were able to win Oops. the entire series. We said that they were the favorites moving into today. And honestly, I expected a great showing by both rosters, and I expected nonetheless that we would go to map three. It was a unique map pick. We started on Cafe, a T3 special, where Purdue actually lost their pick. Cafe is a map where Purdue is absolutely phenomenal on, and all of a sudden, their best map crumbled. So they had to basically do the reverse sweep, winning out theme park in great fashion, a 7-2, and then coming to consulate with another great showing. I got to say, uh, those first two maps, it could have really gone either way. But as I was uh, 
was going through that last map, and you could really tell that Purdue started to step up in the way they were executing. Their teamwork was really well. They played for the plant. They didn't necessarily play for the kills. And yeah, it, 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 was, it was a good game from them. They played very well, but you got to give it to Illinois State. They came out here and won their, not their map pick, but they won the opponent's map pick, which is saying something. It, it's huge in and of itself to upset your opponent, but to do it on their own map, that, that's crazy. Consulate, the decider there, absolute barn burner of a match. It did come down closer, and the scores really didn't show it, but definitely a very good match. And I think Illinois State can utilize this loss today as a lesson to be learned. They can coordinate a lot better on attack as well as defense, particularly dealing with those mini games. It's going to be on the IGL to break down those steps. But I think we have an interview finally prepared it's going to be a representative from purdue the winner of this best of three series that's gonna be providence blessing us as president my friend hello hello there how are you doing tonight i am doing wonderful you're probably doing even better though after winning that great game yeah we are happy with our second two maps for sure you know the first map not so happy with our showing but it is what it is we uh we got those shakes out and cleaned it up on the next two maps so we're happy now, I have to ask, what was your preparation for this series? Because, well, you showed Cafe as your map pick, but you ended up losing it. Yeah, so <laughs> the funny thing is we haven't scrimmed Cafe in quite a while. It's something that we've been uh, really comfortable on in the past. Um, as you might know, we played UIC on it yep. uh, a couple days ago and, and did really well. But I don't know. We just couldn't pull it together. And I think, I think I, honestly, ISU played, played a a really nice game on cafe so cre credit to them there as well but in terms of prep um yeah we we did some dry runs on on the maps we weren't expecting but we didn't dry run cafe so uh maybe that has something to do with it as well i love to hear that so what was your mindset going into that two and three going in we knew isu is not a team to mess around with they uh they will take any freebie you give them and so uh we just had to clean up some of our like droning and comms and uh that that helped out uh i also happened to frag out a little bit on on theme park so that that definitely helped so actually a lot of support players were top frags we saw snail in map one top frag and you in map two top frag so what was leading to these support players you know being the lead entries in air quotes well, uh, part of it's probably that uh, the entry softened it up quite a lot and we got some exit frags. That that probably has a lot to do with it. But uh, but also, I think we were just on some tonight. So th there's that. Now, before I pass it over to Matt, in map number three, both attacking teams really wanted to have control of Cafe in post-plant. What was the idea behind that? Traditional wisdom says as soon as you get the bomb down in garage, you just hide somewhere outside in the grapes and just hang out. But both attacking teams wanted to have cafe. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, for our takes, uh, part of it was like we were really low on HP and manpower when we were getting the plant down in garage. For them, I think pushing D412 for them, we were playing like like a denial strategy and a roam strategy. And so pushing deep into cafeteria and, and just like killing those anchors, I mean, that that destroyed us so that good on them for that one for sure perfect matt the floor is yours well i have only a few questions to ask my first one is going to be the i want to say the mentality going behind the oryx pick i i was pretty caught off guard by that oryx pick on consulate could you just walk me through maybe what was the kind of reason for it yeah, so Smitty, Smitty is our like uh, Canto Ricchetto, Canto Ricchetti <laughs> player, if you will. Uh, so he kind of does his own thing, but he frags out all the time. And so having him on an operator that can just like float around the map at a moment's notice is really strong. And then having the T5 with 1.5x now, he is really strong as well as having the that uh, reconstruction ability with the bailiff. So uh, we like it on 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 the top floor just to help with that roam. Yep. All right, um, there was one other thing I wanted to touch on, but it is escaping me at the moment. It was something about theme park. 
I think it was, what was kind of your, yeah, let's go with that. What was your kind of, uh, your reasoning behind uh, choosing theme park as your map? Well, ISU chose theme park. Oh, we chose my bad. My bad. Okay. Do you mean why we chose caffeine? No, no, uh, my bad. Um, so here, I'll just restructure the question. Uh, so what was the, the game plan going into theme park after losing on cafe? Sorry. Well, so theme park, we actually talked about right before we played, uh, that, so we're a really structured team. And, and when we, when we fall into these structured paths of this is the take we want to do, and it doesn't work out, we, uh, we fall apart a little bit. And so one of the things I talked about beforehand was let's, uh, let's take, let's take that structuredness. And if it's not working, let's add a little, uh, monkey play into it, running around and gunning. And so we didn't have to do that too much, but y you saw some of it, you know, like the Wamai oh, yeah, dragon and things yep. like that. So. Saw some interesting plays. The double deployable shield top yellow was also <laughs> pretty, pretty something I, I you don't see very often. But you know, it worked out for you guys. You look very comfortable on theme park and even on the attacking side. It is inherently a defender sided map, but you guys made it work for you. So congratulations on your win. I don't really have anything else to say, and I don't want to embarrass myself further. <laughs> Thanks so much. You're fun. Cheers. Have a wonderful rest of your day. You definitely earned the celebration. So go back to your team. Have a few cold ones. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks so much. Have a good one. You as well. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap up this best of three series between Purdue and Illinois State here in CR6. We'll be back with you with another play day. That will be tomorrow. But until then, stay safe, stay well, and we'll be back with you tomorrow.